Welcome back to the Fun Time Program. I am your host, John Andrew Fredrickson, here with my lovely co-host, Vivica Boyce. And we have a very special episode today. We've been doing a lot of very serious episodes lately, and the name of our show is... The Fun Time Program. And we thought, you know, maybe it's time to get back to the fun stuff. To the fun stuff. So today we have one of our good friends, TJ Fink. He's known as the Teej Machine here in studio with us today. He's an amazing creator. We've known TJ for a long time. TJ's a a good friend of both of ours. And uh, he has been, you know, one of these like renaissance men in New York City who's a model, an actor, a bartender, a mixologist, you know, does everything. Writing, he's a freelance journalist. He does so many different jobs. And as with everyone else in the creative industries, when COVID hit in March, everything disappeared. Mm -hmm. So what's been so cool is watching TJ completely change directions and like take advantage of this time during the quarantine to blossom into a totally new direction. So we are so excited to have TJ here in the studio today to talk about that experience. TJ, what is on your head? Welcome. Ah, well, thank you for those presumably (laughs) excellent accolades that I can't hear very well because of my bubble. So this is the future, guys. This is the future of, of uh, personal distance and, and social distancing here. I can move all around. I have a personal ventilation machine that's got that's got my personal built-in exhaust. And uh, I can't really hear much of anything, so I'm going to go ahead and take it off. <laughs> <laughs> so, let me, hold on. Ah, there we go. Turn off my fan. Rearrange my hat. Oh my freaking god! Okay, you're and here. Put on my haha. You're here. You've landed. The there astronaut has arrived. There we go. <laughs> what? From what? outer space. What, what, like is, what is the story? Astronaut. What is the story there? What, Tell what is that? us about this tech that you have brought with you. All right. <laughs> Just jump right in. What is this crazy helmet that you've got? It looks like a fishbowl. This looks like something that like someone in 1952 put in a cartoon and imagined the Jetsons wearing. This is amazing. Tell me about your Jetsons helmet, please. I was going to say the Jetsons came early this year. I know, right? So this is a product called the Covidizer. All is right. that actually the name of it? It is. That is the name of it. You can go to uh, COVIDizer, I think it's .org. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, we can plug it in the uh, in the video. We'll, we'll drop really? a link uh, in the description. But, but here's here's how my life works, guys, as a little nutshell. Yeah, how did, how did that happen? How do I have that on my head? The, well, a friend of mine, who is a fellow tech journalist and just journalist in general from New York City, um, during the time of COVID, she pivoted from covering events to more like uh, news and stuff. Mm-hmm. And she posted a picture of someone wearing this helmet on the street somewhere. And I commented on it and said, is there an MSRP? Half joking. What does that mean? Uh, MSRP? The uh, manufacturer's uh, suggested retail price. Mm -hmm. Did I get that? (laughs) Yes. Wow. Did I get that off the bat? Yes, you did. (laughs) Screw you, man, for making me rattle off that acronym. (laughs) Hey, you knew we were going to put you on the spot today. What's an MSRP? Oh, yeah. There there you go. Now I am a journalist. Now you know. (laughs) Um, But uh, I think, yeah, so it's, uh, so I was like, what's the MSRP? And then the owner of the company responded to my comment. Wow. Um, That's okay. And, and They're so, checking their yeah. and so when profile. I, so when I um so when that happened, I DM'd them and was just like, hey. Slide I, to those I'm DMs. Like, yeah, I'm a hey. I'm a tech journalist who writes for a few different magazines and um, I'd love to cover this if you happen to have a spare unit. Mm-hmm. And he did. He um this guy, uh, Haas, he uh, built these in Midtown. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, they're New York himself. based. Yeah. This, wow. uh, so I went and picked this up just uh, uh, yesterday. Wow. Or two, <laughs> two days, days ago. Two days ago. Yeah. Two days ago. So yeah. is this like a demo unit then? It's not like a full production unit? It's very much, it, it's very much um, I would say, in prototype mode. And they're encouraging um, early adopters to give uh, uh feedback mm-hmm. on it. But it's essentially, I mean, at the end of the day, for anybody who's listening here, just imagine an invisible construction helmet that, he, he that is inside in here, a bubble. Hang on. Hang on. <laughs> TJ walked in here wearing an astronaut's helmet. Like everybody's seen astronauts <laughs> with a bubble on their head, like a plastic bubble, right? He walked like, in here with a plastic bubble. like the Jetson style. Exactly. Where it's like the clear bubble where you like practically don't see it except for the outline. But this thing right. isn't just a bubble on your head. It's got, it's got valves it's got uh, yeah. fans it's got a demon it's got a freaking guys, hard hat on the inside guys, here's the thing nobody told you this about the jetsons they weren't wearing those hats because of space that was to protect them from the right. pandemic that happened in the future <laughs> it happened that's the reason honestly yeah. weren't the jetsons set in like 2020 or some shit? something like that <laughs> probably yeah right. nobody said why they're wearing the helmets bro they, like, they, had fly, like the they have flying yeah they have flying flying cars I love um it. A, a robot made and helmets and i got I all actually, three of those by the way i actually do have a robot 
robot maid. Yeah. I have a no. little. I have a little robotic vacuum, and her name is Rosie. Me too. Me Get too. out of here! I didn't know that. And yeah. and, um, and and mine has a picture of a young Fran Drescher on it. My fiance hates this, by the way. Amazing. And and, and so when, so the I have a, so I have a young I yes. love it. And so I have a young Fran Drescher Yo, constantly going dope. around my ah. home <laughs> when I robot vacuum. <laughs> And it, and she oh and she God. was just and, and my, my my oh man I love my fiance when she saw that at the first because I didn't tell her I was doing this, this just like some of my best ideas that don't get me in trouble ever hilarious and, and I so I put that I put that picture out of the vacuum and she's just like well why do you why did you put that there you are you saying I sound like Fran Drescher I'm like. <laughs> What? I was like, whoa. I was like, whoa. Hey, whoa, whoa. I, I, I was like, slow it down. If you did, first of all, first Tara, of all, if, if Tara, yeah. we love you. But she does not sound like Fran Drescher. And if <laughs> no, she, if not she, at all. If she, she has a very lovely voice. Indeed. And a great laugh. Yeah. And if I could plug her right now, she's been doing audiobooks in the time yes. of COVID. She has been. And yes, yeah. we absolutely are plugging Tara are, right now because she's she amazing. Ju- oh, boom. I'm going to do it right now. Yes, please. So Tara Novi is yes. my fiance. And she just released um, her first audiobook. She did. Um, is called Into the Heartless Wood. Yes, and it's it's a a a, a teen um, fantasy fiction, mm-hmm. and it's a wonderful tale. It's a I think it's a ten hours I think on on oh, wow. Audible, wow. and so so this was her first uh, her first um, audio book, and it's incredible. It's 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 so incredible because I started listening to it um, finally the other night because mm-hmm. it's like I want to set aside the time, right? You know, but it's ten hours of time. It's a lot. Amazing. Um, but the, she had a co narrator, so sort of, she had a male co narrator mm-hmm. who had a mostly Welsh accent, mm-hmm. wow. and uh, so the story takes place like in the uk i believe Mm -hmm. and so so she is like this fantasy creature from the woods and so every so her chapters are from that perspective characters she's not the whole narrator right so so different books are doing different things so that's amazing so for uh she's actually in the middle of recording uh another trilogy at the moment and for that trilogy she i believe is just one character actually no she has a co-narrator for that as well so this is a brand new way of telling stories that didn't exist um you know 10 years ago Mm -hmm. um it's kind of like radio plays yeah on, so so kind of. so so just for yeah. everybody listening at home, this is the theme of today's podcast. How has COVID completely changed our world? And that's that's what we're going to be talking about today. You and Tara live in this apartment in in, in near Prospect Park in Brooklyn, right? Yeah. And you guys are both the most amazing creatives, right? Like us, <laughs> we work in this creative industry, right? Where New York City is the place to be. You can do anything, any minute of any day, twenty four hours, seven days a week. Right, and 365 broke, days a year you until you can. You Before could, the world you could be out <laughs> in the city doing something, pursuing any career, any idea, making you know, making oh. connections, meeting people. Right, I that all that disappeared city. overnight, March mm. 13th. Right, I'm so ready to visit that city. Indeed, but watching you guys, I'd, I'd come from all the watching planet for you that guys. City. Right? Me- met- metamorphose is that a word metamorphosis Metamor- metamorphosis mm. metamorphosis wait that's a book kafka that's a that's a terrifying book don't ever read that book franz kafka metamorphosis i, I found watching the, uh, you guys entertaining metamorphosis it was awful oh my god kafka, <laughs> kafka scares me kafka really scares me watching you guys get metamorphosis during this time though whatever has been so <laughs> metamorphosization <laughs> has been so inspiring is what i'm trying to say and i want to talk about that process of going from losing, I don't want to say losing everything. It's not, it's not like our, our, you know, we, we completely lost everything. It's not like the great depression where we were like waiting around in bread lines. It could have been our government stood up just enough to like, you know, get people. A I, know, I mean, there on. were bread lines. There were very there long were bread lines. lines. There were, I don't know anybody yeah. personally who was waiting in them because of, I guess, you know, people having family connections, or whatever, people helping each other out. But the point is that new opportunities arose as a result of this experience and what you guys have been doing in your apartment in Brooklyn is so inspiring. So your fiance Tara now has her first audio book. If you guys want to fall asleep to sorry, Siri, you need oh. to take a break. Um, Speaking of smart technology, nobody, oh, we nobody, live in the future. nobody asked you. Is that hooked up to my helmet? Uh, yeah, right. Can you imagine your smart helmet? The the, the Apple glasses, uh, we're going to get to technology in a minute. Oh, let's, yeah. let's talk about pandemic. Right on. So Tara got her first audio book. What, what what was your experience like? You know, what, before when, we even ask what your experience was like, there was a really specific process that went into Tara being able to record an audiobook in the midst of the pandemic. I mean, in your yeah, apartment. yeah, seriously, tell so us about that. Please, like, enlighten us. How did you manage to get a quiet enough space to do that? Well, 
I happened to be dating a voiceover artist at the time, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and a uh, international pandemic had hit, as you guys, I imagine, have heard whispers of. Is this the same person as your <laughs> fiance? <laughs> just check yep. it. Same, same one. I'm just okay. talking like third person ish now. <laughs> that right? was an odd trick. We, we writers can do this, and nobody and nobody oh, normally cares or asks God. questions unless it's live. God, I love it. It's very stylish. Just clarifying for the audience at home. So, so TJ had some ideas. <laughs> you made it sound like there was a whole different girlfriend at the beginning. I mean, I mean, this ever. show we do we do go into polyamory and all that stuff. Oh my god! I, you you guys, never know. You guys didn't know. You, 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 you guys didn't, you guys didn't know that I create my my narratives in real time, imaginary you know, narratives fine. in, it's in totally parallel fine. multiverses. All right, well, you know what? So, do you? So here's how it goes. I had an idea back in um, uh, let me see. I guess it would have been March or April when uh, Tara. So when Tara graduated from grad school, she went to CUNY Brooklyn mm-hmm. uh, for uh, to get her master's in acting. And so she she graduated last year, thank goodness, like the education sector has been a complete mess for everybody on every level this year, mm-hmm. uh, especially for actors. I mean, it's like, how do you do that remotely? How do you finish your education as an actor remotely? Right. There's, it's a it, very, that's a difficult thing to it's, finish it's a, remotely. Right. It's a very intimate atmosphere. And so the entire and, and the entire world of acting when it comes to uh, theater, when it comes to TV uh, um, and, and film and modeling, all that stuff, the rules are already changing for union and non-union stuff. Mm-hmm. Um and depending on where you live, you may or may not have access to be able to safely even have an opportunity to be an artist in such a way. And so, uh, so it's never been a better time though for voiceover artists. And while okay. and while Tara was at it as an undergrad um, for her master's, if that is the correct term. I guess she was a grad student while she was right. a, while she was a grad student. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> that, that sounds about right. I was like, you're going to get there. It's fine. He'll get there. He's, he's a writer. Yeah. He'll Learn your fiance's pronouns. But this is why I'm always a better writer after I have time to edit. <laughs> so um, this is why we write drunk and edit sober. Isn't that what Hemingway said? Ah, there you go. I believe so. So, so Tara already had a foothold in, with Audible when she graduated. She did a workshop with them and was already kind of on their radar with Audible. And so, so she had dabbled with. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. With you know voiceover stuff, it wasn't what she was pursuing, right? So she's so she's a uh, a trained musical theater right uh, a, a actor, and she, she so she she's, she's pace. in front of the camera kind of girl, normally, right? Because Tara's gorgeous, she is. So now here's the pandemic, and you have the opportunity to be in front of the camera as much as possible. And boom, what are the other opportunities? Voiceover, boom. And meanwhile. She was um, dating someone who had been for the last year freelance writing for a, a entity okay, called really Laptop gotta Magazine. You really got to fucking warn us when you do that shit. To I'm like, how hard is dating? this for you guys to keep track of? I'm the only because, person over here. Right. Okay. But again, <laughs> I'm polyamorous. So again, you would just say she's dating someone. It could be not you, sir. So welcome to the fun time program after dark. All right. I thought you guys know this me well exactly enough. This is exactly how right, I hoped it was going to go. listeners don't know you. Well, they're about to. Well, fine. <laughs> Let's dive in. So. Just to clarify, <laughs> they're in a monogamous relationship and he is always referring to Tara in these stories that going is, forward. That is correct. That is correct. I'll switch back and forth and, you know, first And the person that Tara is dating is TJ. It's, it's, it, it's, it's, it's me. It's still TJ if I ever, the whole time. If I ever go back and forth, it, it's just always me the whole time. Okay. So I love it. Now all that right. it's clarified, all of our readers are starting to get an idea of how weird I am and I'm sure they'll keep listening. I love, I love this. This is the best episode. Go. <laughs> so, uh... TJ or I had this idea <laughs> back in March or April with this with this then girlfriend, not fiance. Perfect. Who uh, we were st- we were still trying to figure out how to uh, pivot with purpose. If yeah. it, if I may plug a uh, podcast that I that I listened to, that was the name of a podcast that we listened to around that time nice. um, from a podcast called The Long and Short of It. Uh, which is a just a wonderful yeah check it out. Okay. So during that time, while she's doing this stuff, I uh, was already freelance writing for a magazine called Laptop Magazine. Um, and I've been freelancing for them for about a year, but I actually used to be their copy editor 12 years ago. Dope. So I moved to New York City for the publishing industry originally. Mm-hmm. And so I diverted from that industry um, for acting and fitness modeling, uh, commercial work, uh, working events, uh, mixology, bartending uh, over the what last- What didn't you do? Yeah, exactly. I should make that, that list is shorter. I should probably start with that. <laughs> so the last 10 years have been a lot of fun and I'm reacquainting myself with mobile tech. Mm-hmm. Um, so I used to be a, mo- a, a mobile tech journalist. My first event in New York City as a mobile tech journalist with a, uh, a uh, press badge and everything was for the launch party of the T-Mobile G1. Oh yeah. It was in a, wa- right. it was a warehouse down in the West Village. Oh, the Racketeurs the were playing. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, I ran into Jason Biggs at the bar. Okay. He, Wait, from American Pie? That yeah, guy? Yeah, that guy. <laughs> I'm baffled that you actually have heard of American Pie. <laughs> I have seen American Pie. Yeah. Of all the fucking things. You know, it was one of those movies in high school that you just had to see <laughs> at some point. And, and it was shown to me. <laughs> and, I, and how about this? Here's a full circle moment for you, John. I distinctly remember walking in the door and I look around. And I'm walking around for maybe two minutes with my fellow journalists that I, that I walked in with. And I look around, I'm like, man, all the bartenders and wait staff are gorgeous. What do they do? Hire models or something for these things? I heard and, that line before. And he looks over to me. He's like, yeah, yeah. they do. It's New York. Obviously. <laughs> and then I made the joke to him. How do I get that job? That sounds fun. That I ended up actually do, do, doing that sort of weird stuff like five years later yep. or six years later. Cater, waiter. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Yeah, art imitating life, imitating art, imitating TJ. I don't know. Yeah, so long story long, I mean, like uh, four <laughs> years later after that, I had gained a, about uh, 70 complacent pounds on my frame for having a desk job and not a lot of time to go to the gym and no particular incentive because I had become what I like to call boyfriend complacent. Boyfriend complacent. So you're in a relationship at the time? I was. uh, And And you gained 70 pounds. Well, over the course of four years, my first four years living in New York. I just can't imagine this. I can. I've I've only ever known. Because you met me after. Fit TJ. Yeah. So, so there's, so, so imagine going from, so I went from working at Laptop Magazine from freelance fact checker to editorial assistant to associate editor in two and a half years. Then I went from there uh, after the financial crisis to the ESRB, the Entertainment Software Rating Board, where I was a right. ma- I was a manager there. And um, I eventually uh, was laid off from that job. Um, it's a very small nonprofit. And so my, so my position was uh, absorbed by, by um, another manager. But when I left that job, um, I happened to be roommates with a, a, a good friend of mine who was doing acting and modeling, Joe Cummings. Joe. Yeah. So I, Joe. I, was, I was roommates with Joe Cummings at the time. And we'd been talking about kicking our own asses at the gym. He found a casting for like uh, one of those weight loss infomercial things, and the, like way- the before and after kind of deal. Yeah, and those nice. are and those are real. They just nice. put in the fine print all the work that goes in. Yeah, it's an eighteen week program, right? And they send you free product, and if you lose the weight, they'll they'll fly it to Toronto for a uh, photo sh- photo shoot. And wow. so Joe got chosen, and I did not, which lit a, lit a extra fire under my ass to finish what I started. <laughs> Wait, nice. was, did he need to lose weight? No, no, he got chosen. Yeah. In- and they that they chose him. They didn't choose TJ. We were part of a test group of about thirty people. So why would they choose him if he wasn't needing to lose the weight? It, because the workout that we were put on was um, very specific seven tab Excel spreadsheet of uh, diet, nutrition, cardio, weight training, and it's all meant to accentuate the beach muscles and get you a solid core. Nice. And so that's what they wanted. So whatever your transformation was, and it was literally called the transformation workout. Nice. Whatever your transformation was, they wanted a six pack, and I. The personal trainer that we were assigned to told me, I don't know if he's lying or just trying to make me feel better. He told me that I was edged off of the last marketing meeting because I didn't quite have a six pack. And he, Oh, and so you didn't cut quite enough. So I'd lost about 60, 50, 60 pounds at Jesus the time. Jesus Christ. And it wasn't enough. And it wasn't enough. And I, <laughs> and, and so I was going to the gym twice a day. I was doing, for, for like a few weeks, I was going to the gym twice a day, do the cardio in the morning, oh boost up your metabolism, God. and then wow. do your weight training at night and have your muscle recovery this is, at night. This is the moment where we put the, the six pack uh, photos of TJ up on the screen because oh, I've only ever known wonderful. six pack TJ. I've never known that <laughs> couldn't quite get to six pack TJ and lost a job as a result. Yeah. That's, what a story. So that was how you got into modeling. Yes. I, wow. I, I, uh, the only, honestly, like if I hadn't, if I didn't have somebody like a close tie in the industry to um, just show me the ropes of it. I wouldn't have thought to try it. I was doing stand-up comedy at the time, um, and I moved to New York for the publishing industry. So I liked attention and <laughs> an, ex, an, ex, an extroversion, no question about it. But as it turns out, I'm more of an introverted extrovert. So yeah. this is this is what's so amazing, though. This is what people like you and 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 us and we we moved to New York City. Wait, who for. are you talking about? We're talking Which about stands? people who like. To, is this to, you? Or are you talking about who you? Like or? To, to be, I will murder you. You know, who <laughs> like to be connected to other people and like to see and be seen and and <laughs> utilize their their you know human in- abilities to interact and seduce people. Let's say you know not sexually, but just like to be useful visually, to be useful in in sort of an entertaining way, right? People like that move to New York City and thrive here. That disappears March thirteenth. What yeah. is that like? Wow. Well, I'm glad you asked. Are you guys sitting down? 
Let me fact check it <laughs> oh real God. quick. Oh my God. <laughs> we yes, brought you the are. couch for just for this one. Perfect. Perfect. Oh, March arm rests 13th, as well. The NBA shuts <laughs> down. Where were you when you heard the NBA was canceled for the season? That was the moment I knew this shit was getting serious. Because up until that moment, none of my jobs have been canceled. Uh you might want to rephrase that question because I haven't followed professional sports in like I don't six either. years. Yeah. I don't either, but it was still, it was something that was like serious it was, enough. It was a big thing. Like I noticed it, but at the same yeah. time I was like, oh, okay. I, I mean, think, but obviously. I think you're right though. I'm but the to, reason I point that question. out though is because it that was, was the me, moment. For me, it was when Broadway went dark. Mm. When when was that? I, don't, I, I didn't hear that. Uh, when Broadway went dark. It's halfway through March. Uh, yeah. It it's was like 18th. Yeah, it was. That's that's later already. Like, we're talking like the, the the Wednesday is like 11th was the day the, the NBA shut down. Was it? Right. But like there was still it wasn't until the 15th officially that um, New York City called the pandemic. Could, right. But I, it felt like it happened before that. All my jobs started canceling on the 13th. That my last job was the 13th and one after another well, after another. Well, how about canceling. this, guys? I could legit I could legit uh, use technology to fact check this because I have a friend who came to New York from Chicago with her husband to do a uh, pole dancing workshop. Love it. Actually okay. in Midtown. So the kind she, of things you come to New York yeah, for, right? Sure. 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. <laughs> every day. Mm-hmm. The, se- the first week of March. She yeah. had no idea the world was crumbling around her shoulders. And when she finished that workshop and got in the cab to go to Moulin Rouge with her husband, mm-hmm. Moulin Rouge got canceled on their cab ride wow. there. Come to find out, the whole cast had it. They I'd were going to be in to front know. row. I'd love to know. Wow. They would have been, wow. been in spitting distance. Um, wow. Yep. Like legit. And so uh, so that, so that I can literally fact check the day that Broadway said, nope. Yeah. Look, um, I mean, let's look it up. Like, yeah, now. if you like. Um, but so what was, what was that experience? Dark for so, yeah. over a year? so I would say, so I say that's a pretty good barometer for me too, because, uh, because Tara is a musical theater right. actor. And so, and Broadway is huge. Like you should, we have a whole box. You should see this box. She's kept every single playbill of, of, wow. uh, that she, like, I think that she's ever like since high school and stuff, we have a whole, we have a whole like a uh, big uh, plastic box. You know what, Miss Terranovi, you're you got to come in here and do the podcast soon, and we want to see your box March of playbills. March 12th, yes, is yeah, when that's, uh, that when sounds Broadway about right. Yeah, yeah, March yeah, yeah. 12th. That, yeah. That's that same week. And the last job that I worked was March 8th, teaching a mixology class okay. in Brooklyn at a private residence. And I think I look back at myself, like I look at the timeline now. I'm like, I was probably helping spread disease. I had that feeling you know? all through the end of February and early yeah. March because I was interacting with a lot of people that were coming in from overseas. A lot of people are coming in from China. Yeah. You know, and we knew that that's where the virus was coming from. And I was like, I feel like I'm on the front lines to be a vector for this, but nobody seemed to care yeah. until all of a sudden everything stopped. Right. Yes. Because nobody cared until it affected them directly. And um, well, until they're forced to care. And isn't is what that, it, what a, it was isn't a that a larger metaphor for 2020? <laughs> right, 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 right. So what was but, that uh, like for you guys? What You guys were living the dream, yeah. you know? So- um, well, I mean, the dream of, of working actors in New York, it's always, everybody, sure. everybody's got a journey and but at everybody's least, got their, at least you had it, you, you, you were on a path that you kind of felt like you, you knew where you were going, right? Like right you, you were doing stuff and, and it was getting somewhere and you were going to continue getting somewhere, right? Then pandemic happens and everything you're like aiming for gets taken off the table. What do you do? Like, what is that experience like? So, well, this will circle back to your uh, question of like how Tara got her voiceover studio in our apartment. I was, I, if you weren't going to circle back to that, I was going to make you circle back. Oh, I, is, love, this, I love full circle narratives. This is so cool. I'm <laughs> so excited for you to talk about this. Uh, Tell so us how it circles back. So um, right around that time, I had already been writing for, uh, I'd been freelance writing for Laptop Magazine since uh, not this past August, but the previous one. So I'd been freelance writing for them for about six months and building momentum with, uh, or building relationships with the editors I was working with and also reacquainting myself with their CMS, their content management system, Mm -hmm. which is called Vanilla, which is the, (laughs) which, uh, is, uh, the name of just, uh, the platform for, it's basically like WordPress. It's our favorite ice cream flavor. Uh, I bet it is. I mean, it might be your favorite ice cream flavor. <laughs> it just occurred to me. We can, we can, we can, uh, we can re-enter, we can, we can re- revisit this another time. There's plenty of jokes to be made that the main platform I ran on is called Vanilla. I'm right. just now realizing. <laughs> I, I, I was very surprised that I was the only one giggling yeah. at that. No, I am internally giggling and now out loud. Ha ha. <laughs> uh, so I, so, uh, they write about mobile tech, pretty much all, like all sorts of mobile tech, uh, laptops, obviously, software, hardware, printers, keyboards, peripherals, accessories, all that stuff. And um, I, I now know 
and this was the beginning of that, that if I t- go to my editors and I have an idea, sometimes they will like them and pay me for them. And so I added a- It's always a really nice feeling. Yeah. And Very I, validating. And so I had a girlfriend who was, who was uh, starting her voiceover uh, career in the time of COVID, and she needed a voiceover studio. And so I had an oh, wait, idea to stop. build it in our walk-in closet. Yeah, you We're stop. We're getting to the story, but I- And if, I, and if you let me finish- We'll get all the way there. All right. Oh, boom. Stop. Payment time. No, before that, though, I want to hear what was the- I'm two sentences away from the end of your question. Okay. (laughs) So then I had the idea uh, of, of an article called How to Build a Voiceover Studio in Your Closet. Because I was in the middle of building a voiceover studio in my closet for Tara. So you you had already been trying to do this, but what was it like when when your job started canceling? Because so if you me, take your glasses off, by the way, it's hard for me to read your face. Oh wow! <laughs> I, I thought we were doing the after the after dark episode. I was there. so excited for this. Well, I All came right. here to emote with you, man. Oh my God, how, can so I, how can I how can I emote? Can there's there's too many lights. At some point. Hi guys. Okay, so my sunglasses are off. So my experience when everything started canceling was one initially of dread. It was like when I first moved to New York there was always something else that you could do. If this job didn't work out, if that job didn't work out, there was always something else you could hustle your uh, ass off at. And all of a sudden, everything was gone and you didn't know for how long and you didn't know where your money was going to be coming from, how you were going to be paying rent, how you're going to be paying your bills. And there was no stimulus. There was none of that. There was no unemployment. We were 1099. Unemployment mm-hmm. didn't exist for independent contractors, for right. creatives. You know what I mean? What was that like for you guys? Was there a period of time where you didn't know what you were going to do? <clears throat> or was it immediately you were like, okay, we're changing, we're changing, you know, directions? It was, it was a transition. I mean, it looks it, it, like, it feels like a, a whole lifetime, like a year ago when this all well, started I mean, to hit. that's because 2020 was a decade long. Literally. I mean, March yeah. was a solid five years. Easily. Seriously. Easily. So. And and so, it, like, for the first uh, couple of weeks, uh, Tara thought there was something wrong with me because all I did was lounge around on the couch in a melancholy. Um, yeah. Like, I literally, like, uh, yeah. went into a miniature depression. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just like, I, I, I tend to get a the- A lot of us did. Yeah, I tend to get the winter blues, usually in the dead of winter. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, it's a very common thing in the Northeast. Yeah. Uh, um, you know, with the changing of seasons and when the cold of- Yeah. yeah when you're stuck Seasonal inside- Seasonal affective disorder. Yeah, there you go. Um, so, uh, so that normally is not that big of a deal, but this year it had gotten a little bit. Oh yeah. It was a little amplified. Yeah. It was like, oh, Hey, so your yeah. seasonal depression meet your, uh, like your pandemic depression or and meet also, your maker. <laughs> right. Meet your and maker. also your existential like dread <laughs> depression. Yeah. So oh, it's like, well, the thing is, really it, and the thing is about like uh, COVID is that like, um, it really brings to light. It really brought to light so many things that are wrong with this country. But also, if there's something wrong with your relationship, you get nowhere to hide. Mm-hmm. So now, so we live together. In eight, How did that work out for you guys? You're about well. You, you already heard <laughs> that she get, is, that I got engaged. It apparently got better. There not you go. Worse. So, so, that, so that's the thing. Is it sounds. like so up until the time of uh, COVID, we bo- I was working for maybe twenty to twenty five different companies. Mm-hmm. Um, whoever would call me and give me a job first. That was kind of how my hustle was. And I really appreciated that freedom because it gave me full, fi- full financial freedom um, for my freelance hustle. And there is absolutely no way for any of my employers to fact check uh, who, who, who I'm working for at any given time, right. which means that none of them can hassle me or hold me accountable uh, to my schedule and what I'm doing, nor so you can take a day off whenever you feel like right. taking a day because off. Because I'm and never no one can say, "Well, I yeah. know you're free." Right, and and even and even then, it's just like I'm also I would never be working for anyone really so much mm-hmm. that um, it would affect their bottom line that much. Right, and so over the over the last seven years, I've started working for more and more higher end clientele and more and more private residences. Mm-hmm. Um, I've I've worked three different events that Gwyneth Paltrow has been on I, been at. I have almost tripped over her gown three different times. I have bartended at her home, uh, ish. Have you tried her vaginal egg? Uh, well, no, no, not that. But what I but the end of that how, sentence is I, I guarantee you that she would not recognize me in public. I have so many gotcha. questions. How first? How would TJ try a vaginal egg? I mean, I could think of one or two ways. <laughs> I can think of maybe one tops. Right. <laughs> But, Conversation uh, but for, a, for another episode. <laughs> what's what's that? What's that meme where it's just like absolutely no one? Me. <laughs> <laughs> That's John's m- m- real time meme right now. <laughs> yep, you know it. Yep. But um, so yeah, so that was a bit of a transition. Like we, um, because we weren't really sure what was what was going to happen. Um, I I actually this had been slightly familiar to me because I had like um when I was laid off. I mentioned before from the ESRB. Uh, the Entertainment Software Rating Board, mm-hmm. which is like T for Teen and for Mature, yep. if anybody's not familiar with that uh, entity. Um, when that happened, I uh, 
then got a knee surgery and I wasn't able to work for a little while in between. I had, I had my second ACL replacement during that time, during that little interim, and I was paying for Cobra. Replacement? Um, yeah. And Cobra is so expensive. It was ridiculous. Holy shit. Co- Co- you might as well just not have insurance because like at the end of the day, it almost ends up being more expensive to have Cobra unless what you is Cobra? absolutely need it. It's like temporary insurance when you're between uh, – like if you're going from being employed to being in a new job, that like oh, right, gap because in between. You only get employment, uh, healthcare from employment, right? Right. That, that right. awesome system we have. Right. Because that we're <laughs> in America. Yeah. Yes. I was paying like six hundred dollars a month for Cobra. It was ridiculous, but I knew wow. that. But the, yeah. But the reason I was doing it is because I knew already that I'd already been diagnosed of needing a new ACL mm-hmm. replacement. Wait, so I was yeah, like, you, 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 I was working you, 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 for a nonprofit with yeah. great insurance. So how I'd, do you replace a tendon? Uh, well, what do they replace it with? Well, the first time I had that surgery, they replaced it with a piece of my hamstring. So you can you, wow. you, you can use a piece of your own tissue, or you can use That's a cool. cadaver's tissue, which is like you take a cadaver, a piece of the cadaver's a- ACL, and tra- and transplant it into dead people. Yeah, That's awesome. Dead people. So, wow. So I got a. Uh, you just reminded me that I never, I actually, uh, you, an ACL donor. That's cool. Yeah. So cool. You actually reminded, you just reminded me. I don't know if there's any way for me to re- to reverse fact check this, but you have the opportunity to send a thank you note to your donor's family mm-hmm. after, after the surgery. And I never got the chance to do that. I, I had that letter somewhere. So Aww. if if you're ever listening, anybody who knows that, that, that TJ Fink has your ACL and this is part of your family, I don't know how <laughs> you would be listening to this podcast right now, but if you are, thank you. Um, because that surgery was much stronger and my first surgery happened in central New York by Syracuse, um, which is, uh, the healthcare in New York city is a sight better. Mm-hmm. And so, so that's something that just like the rest of the planet, you know, people come here from all over the world for uh, good healthcare and doctors come here for the competitive nature. And you, you know, you spend 10 years as a doctor in New York city, you can get a job anywhere on the planet. Yep. And just like anything else, just like, you know, uh, bartending and stuff, just like it. Yeah. yeah. Anything at all. So when, when everything dried up, when all the things that made New York, New York dried up, you know, um, and I, and I happened to P.S. Uh, I was dating at the time, now engaged to a full on New Yorker. Both sides of her family are, mm. uh, you know, she, oh, so she's, she's the real generational deal. Yeah. New Yorker. She grew up in, she's the real deal. She grew up in Queens, you know, and so <laughs> and so she's got both sides of her family. A lot of them are here deeper. When I when I moved here, country mouse from a freaking dairy farm, <laughs> I wasn't expecting to. I, I came here to write stories hey, and, and, and have fun. How many siblings do you have? Uh, six. Ah, you're digging right into the stuff, uh, aren't you? We got lots of stuff uh, to yeah. talk about. Six siblings living on a farm. Yeah, a very dynamic and life then you here. Come to the city, all starry eyed, fightful. I liked. Ooh, here's here's a joke I like to it, like to make from back in my stand up comedy days. I moved here 13 years ago with about seventy two hundred dollars in my checking account. Um, about Wait, six ideas and no connections. Hmm? Did you move here in 08? Um, oh seven. Oh, fall of oh seven. The year before me, I moved yeah. here in oh eight. I think we talked about that. Yeah, yeah. so we've been here around the same time. <laughs> it's interesting how New York uh, shows you collectively a, a certain amount of respect after ten years. Yeah. Once you hit that decade mark, it's like people are like, "Oh, well, you're in New York." A decade in New York is a lifetime in any other city, and, that, and that's something I didn't, everything moves so much faster here. And, and until other people told me that, I hadn't really thought about patting myself on the back. But it's not easy to stay here and live here and afford to live here for ten years. A lot of and, and a lot of people that's their hustle. It's like you just pack up whatever money and possessions you have, get to New York. However much time you spend here, that will carry you when you get, get to, kicked out. Yep. And, and you run out of your money. Because you can then go back and be like, yeah, I like I was bartending in New York. Yeah. And I had a job here. And like it's really hard for them to fact check that shit. Yeah. And so it's just like I forget that sometimes like when I go home to my like hometown bar, which mm-hmm. has been a while at this point. And like when people talk to me about like like uh old stuff I've done that I'm not even involved in doing anymore. And they're, and they want to talk about it for hours and stuff. That's not even part of my life. Anymore. And yeah. I'm just like, wow, the world moves so fast in New York, yeah. but in, but in most of the planet, it does not. No. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, just to finish that context, I grew up on 160 acres of small dairy farm mm-hmm. by outside of Syracuse, New York. And um, so I, I went to St. Lawrence university in upstate New York by Potsdam and then down to New York city where I uh, I really thought that after living here for, you know, a few years, I would acclimate to seeing the world. And then I went to uh, Western Europe for the first time really last year mm-hmm. and saw that New York City is really a bastardization of cultures that are brought over here from all over the planet. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just like, yeah, it's very, it, traveling is so important. Yeah, um, it gives so, you perspective. Yeah, so when all that stuff kind of dried up um, during COVID, 
Let's see here. So, I mean, T- Tara's in the middle. Well, it, we're to- we're in the middle of audition season. When uh, so when everything uh, everything uh, dry uh, kind of dried up, like uh, Tara was kind of going into audition season for theater for the theater world. Uh, you know, like right. That, I, I believe that there's a yeah, there's a certain kind of audition season for theater around, this is in around March. that time. Yeah, right. last year. Yeah, in March last year. Um, and so she had been, she'd already been, um, dipping her toes into audiobook stuff, Mm -hmm. but she hadn't had the time yet to build out her reels. Um, she didn't have, like, she wasn't working with any audio engineers or or anything. She kind of just, she'd been putting more of her efforts into specifically like uh, musical theater and like live and plays. In person stuff. All the Mm in-person stuff. Um, so once everything. Because why would you waste that beautiful face on being behind the microphone? That's exactly what I said. Right. That's what I've been saying for years. <laughs> I for year for the last six years. I was like, I'm Babe. sure she loves hearing it over <laughs> and over. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so so that's and so the thing about you know COVID, it's like in uh, in this time of chaos, there's brand new business models that have popped up that can then um, that can then transition into whatever it is happening next. You know, voice. So she can take the skills as a voiceover artist and then continue to do everything else that she was doing. Um, and so, but at first it was like, yeah, I was lounging around with my little extra seasonal depression, <laughs> not quite knowing what to do. Um, we were figuring out the unemployment stuff, which, uh, which honestly Tara really, uh, took the, it took the uh, bull by the horns on that one. Like she's very, she's very good about doing the meticulous paperwork stuff that I, I, I find tedious and hate doing. Nice. <laughs> um, That's very important. And, and like, so like, fa- like ferreting out little deals and, um, oh, and, 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 oh, and so she good. barely knows this term by the way, but she, for the first time met my, my family's ferret over the summer. And so now, so now she gets kind of what, it, what I mean. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> They're nice. like slinkies. Yeah, they are. And like, yeah. they like, yeah, yeah. If they, if they can fit their nose like, into yeah. something into a crack, they can get the rest of their body squeezed through They're it. They're long cats. Yeah. 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 They're like uh, little long cats. But hard to train because yes. they just like oh, to play all the time. Yep. Yeah. Oh, mischievous as fuck. So uh so anyways, she uh so she kinda took the reins of doing that um while I was getting rid of my depression, I suppose. Mm-hmm. And we thankfully, uh, like this is the best apartment that we have both collectively lived in. Either one of us, honestly, as adults in New York city, the best that we've been able to afford mm-hmm. and great neighborhood neighborhood in prospect park South, um, good management company. And we have laundry in the basement. We have a dishwasher. The amenities wow. are, are all of, are all of the, the things that I'm really so grateful to have right now. now. So <laughs> in terms of the starving oh. artist lifestyle, you guys had but it's upgraded. But uh, but we're working really hard to do that. Right. And so that's the thing is we're working um, like I. So the way I lived my life, anybody could give me a call or text or email at any time for an opportunity. I then had to assess in real time. Yeah. Is this an opportunity I want to take? Right. And do I have the time for it? So I was. Even like, when you're working, you have to be yeah. take, fielding other jobs. Right. Which was such a stressful beautiful. thing. And so we were both doing that for different um, jobs for for me, for mostly bartending and managing events, for her doing brand ambassador work, stuff that really is like a survival jobs and not very fulfilling. Mm-hmm. But I she, call them bread and yeah. butter. Yeah. <laughs> but, the, but the thing is, like one of the one of the things that I found over the over the years was figuring out how to make my survival jobs my art. And so I didn't realize I was doing it at the time. But bartending, when I started bartending, um, it's funny, actually, one of the first nights I started bartending, I, I was uh, working probably an event that you were at and Blake Blake raised his hand and said, hey, who, who's my best mixologist here? And I had zero mixology experience at the time, <laughs> and, you were like, and nobody else me. raised their and nobody else raised their hand. Bunch of pansies. So I, <laughs> You're like, I guess. So I was me. like, I give it a shot. I, I can mix liquids and pour it in over ice. <laughs> sure. Sure. <laughs> um, and so, like, uh, yeah. So fast forward seven years later, and uh, uh, like a colleague of mine like mentioned, you know, teacher, you you could teach mixology classes. Like, mm-hmm. you're not bad at you know giving people instruction on that. I'm like, that's not a bad idea. So I put together a business model of mixology classes for another company. Um, and I created a mixology program for them and that has now branched off into my own. And so that's one of the things that I do that like at the, at the time, like honestly, before COVID, I'd never used Instagram live or zoom. Not once. Wow. Not even once. Wow. I didn't have the time or the inclination right. for, for what, uh, what I was doing with my platforms, mm-hmm. um, which were eclectic enough without adding that to the mix. And so now that I have, now that I know how to do those platforms, um, Instagram live is not going anywhere. Neither is zoom. And so for anybody who knows my contact information, you can reach out to me and do a consult. And these virtual mixology classes I've found, um, like I did a couple over the, over the holidays for like Puma and Nike corporate, I think were two of my clients. Um, 
but it's a lot of team building stuff lately. Like nobody can go out and do the team building events you'd normally do with your company. Right. right. So you do these virtual outings and, you know, people get zoomed out after an hour or so. Right. So uh, usually for, zoomed out. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so like uh, 45 minutes to an hour is like the sweet spot for these happy hours. And so I'll just do this. So I'll do consults ahead of time. Like I used to manage events in person that were customizable to the nth degree. Right. Um, which you guys both know. I've worked with both Absolutely. of you at these sorts of events. <laughs> I've worked on boats with you. Woo-hoo. I've worked at the MoMA with you. Yeah. I've, where have we not done catering in this town yeah. in a place with a ceiling space of eight foot or higher? Yep. <laughs> Welcome to the service industry right. life of New York yeah. City. And, then, and then, I, I only enter rooms that are 12 feet and higher. So oh, I see that here. I see yeah. that here. That's why it's so spacious. It's and a new life requirement <laughs> for myself. But uh, so, so yeah, so, so really interesting to see all that just kind of dry up. And so all these events, I had grown accustomed to that, like I could cherry pick these different events um, for better and better clientele because I had the luxury of like, if a, if a client didn't treat me very well by the end of my shift, then they wouldn't see me tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And I would, and, um, and I could, I could red flag them in my paperwork, yep. um, that I didn't want to, so that if, uh, if the, uh, the staffing agency I was working for reached out to me and with that client, again, I could recognize the address or the client's yep. last name and just say, no, thank you. Yeah. I don't have to be mean about it. I don't have to, like, I don't have yeah. to have a confrontation. I could just say, no, thanks. I'm not available. Yeah. And, and so once I wrapped my head around the, the, the concept as a freelancer of just being unavailable or available and nothing in between, it, poof, it really opened up my world because, the, because at the end of the day, when it comes to a, being a professional freelancer, most of the planet doesn't care why you're doing what you're doing. They only care about your results. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it, like right. what, what are you, what are you churning out? So, so all that ends. So all that ends. And, um, I finish up my depression and I build Tara a voiceover studio Which because so cool. because I had already been working for that magazine. Do you have pictures of that we can put on the screen? I this? do. Absolutely. I certainly do. Yeah, we'll, we'll reach out for those. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. And, uh, so I did a lot of inter- – so at the time, I had been – the reason I had that idea is because I'm writing for a mobile tech magazine – um, that is, uh, you know, focus, they, they do cover microphones, USB mics mm-hmm. and condenser mics and speakers and laptops and other mobile accessories. And so, uh, they, d- and they also have partnerships with Amazon, Best Buy, um, different, uh, retailers where that's the Venn diagram of, uh, buyer's guides and affiliate programs and all that stuff. Um, I don't like, I'm, I don't think any of the magazines I write for have affiliate programs, but that's another business model that's popped up mm-hmm. over the over the um, over the last ten years. Right, bloggers and, who yeah. write articles about tech and they link to affiliate links and like ad clicks. Like ad clicks started being very important when I was copy editing for Laptop Magazine, and now that business model had trans has translated into smartphones um, into a business model that it, that is controlled by AI algorithms that have gotten us addicted to them. Yep. So it was a totally different world back then when I was there because I was when I was working for Laptop Magazine. Uh, Instagram hadn't come out yet. Yep. Twitter had just recently come. I remember copy editing articles entitled something like how to use your Twitter for business. I, you know, if, if this pandemic had happened even 10 or 15, let me, let's say 20 years ago, oh which, God, in the nineties, can you imagine this happening in the nineties? I mean, mm. for, from a personal like experience perspective, obviously that would be incredibly different. Like the technology we have today enables us to be able to enjoy quarantine in yeah. ways that we couldn't have done in the past. But what about just from like a business perspective, like these business opportunities that you've managed to create for yourself and for your fiance, uh, are these business opportunities that you could have discovered and figured out, you know, 10, 15, 20 years ago, do you think? Or is this like it yeah. just happened to this pandemic happened at the right time where all of these things were like coalescing? It. It's, it's very interesting because it's just like I've always been a mobile tech nerd. When I was 11 years old, I won a poster contest that uh, that got me and my family our first computer. It was a Packard Bell a uh, Packard wow. Bell computer. So you've been doing this. So it had a Windows 3.1. It was my nice. it was my biggest toy, my biggest, most expensive toy. Wow. That's what year was this? At the time that I was eleven. You're eighty six, right? I, I was born in eighty four. Oh, you're old. Right. <laughs> so uh <laughs> So that's where I got my love for mobile technology, I guess, to begin with, like starting out with that, like this, 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 this is a computer that my family couldn't afford right. at the time. It was like Lotus Works days, <laughs> Do- wow. like DOS stuff. I mean, yeah. Windows 3.1 yeah. was before Windows 95. So yeah, yeah. Windows 95 was like the, the kind of... Yeah, I re- I had a DOS computer. Wow, yeah, yeah. I remember having DOS video games on a floppy disk. Wow, and, uh, like you had to like type the right prompt in to a, get the game. A floppy disk. I remember. I remember mo- installing mo- a game mo- called because- Space Quest on seven floppy seven three point five. Yeah, it took right. you install each it took one. Yeah, you had, yeah. Oh my god! You had, like it had the little. It came with a case of floppy disks. Yeah, oh my god! Yeah, oh yeah. my god! One of seven. Right. What? And then when they got smaller, the little like what is now our save icon. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, I know. That's it. So it's just like it's so. I, I love how like literally in our lifetime, I've seen uh, us go from rotary phone to smartphone, and yep. and we're gonna see quantum computing. I mean, take we've off. gone we've, from we've gone from rotary phone to VR, pure analog. We've gone from pure analog yeah. to a digital world that is just incom incomprehensible. Is that is yeah? That right? Well, yeah. You mentioned <laughs> VR. Uh, well, here you go. I brought these for show and tell. Show and tell. These are the uh, the, You're fir- just Mr. Tech the first the first consumer friendly uh, Samsung Oculus goggles. Yeah. So do you these- just put your phone in it? Yeah. So yeah, your you fo- had- your phone would go here. Uh huh. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, I actually still have a phone that's compatible for this. So what you do is there's a little and like plug both. that um, plugs into your uh, charging port inside the VR, and you plug your phone in, and there's an app on your phone that you turn on. Be- uh, as you plug it in and then you have either headphones in, um, or you can, it has speakers on it cause it's using the speakers on your phone. Mm-hmm. And then it uses the screen of your phone to project the VR in, and it uses the accelerometer and the gyroscope of your phone mm. to create the virtual reality. That's pretty sweet. And the Samsung, uh, Galaxy S4 was I, the, I believe the, um, flag mark at flag, the flagship, flagship smartphone at the time that they were that was uh, originally compatible with that no i think it was the s6 was it the s6 it was the s6 because i had the original compatible phone it was the s6 and then the uh. s7 which i still have and it's still compatible um and then it was the note 2 and mm. i think the note 3 yeah um it was like a limited compatibility yeah. and i have one of those phones at home that's bro- broken i like I, yeah, if i plug it in it lights up now, but it, it won't boot up on me i just i just want it for Wi-Fi. so how important is the state of technology today to these opportunities that you have been able to take advantage of to survive this pandemic and to thrive during this pandemic to make this transition in one, what was what, pivot in one with word? purpose i love that phrase ah when when at what point in everything falling apart did you realize that you needed to pivot with purpose? Like, what was that realization like? Uh, was it a slow realization? Was it a moment? Well, the thing is, I was already pivoting. You uh, were like the like uh, you had these ideas. The th- like the thing was, I was like, I moved as I mentioned before. Like, I moved to New York to be a freelance writer. You know what? Like, this is this is so true, and, and I think it's something that, that we happen to be at that right point in our in our kind of stage of our trajectories here in New York where we have established ourselves enough with doing the hustle jobs with doing the bread and butter work to knowing that like we can use these jobs as an opportunity to be doing the next big thing. We were already thinking that way when pandemic hit. So we were well positioned to take advantage of that time. What I wonder is what happened to all the people who had just moved here, you know, and 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 we're still trying to figure it out. They all ended up moving back. And I and I think about that all the time because Man. all right, look at look at these different How industries. lucky we were. We 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 were Man. so perfectly positioned for this pandemic. And so that and, and that's the sort of thing is just like uh I I been, I've been saying for probably the last decade that, you know, it's like I, I am the sum of my journey, you know, and everybody is. And so it's like my, my journey has led me here and I'm very, really, really grateful to, have, you know, grown up on a farm, like farmers are handy. My dad's a handyman, like a farmer needs to be um, a carpenter, an engineer, a mechanic, uh, a, 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 pedi- a pediatrician, a veterinarian, a cook, uh, a cook all that stuff mm-hmm. at different times. And so I like I, I kind of accidentally by osmosis took those that lifestyle into New York City yeah. um and so and but I came here to be a storyteller but I also like working with my hands and I have this whole pesky adult ADHD thing that I'm sure nobody's picking up on yet Never. <laughs> what who has ADHD around here it would not be any of the three of us am I the only one who can see all the audio frequencies in the air <laughs> right like moving in the air is it just me <laughs> oh that might just be the mushrooms no. but the, oh oh yeah that too <laughs> Ah, you know, it's one of the two. It's one of the fun two. Fun time program after dark. Extra fun all the time. <laughs> new, your new tag, fun time program all the time. <laughs> With a dot, dot, dot in between, which in my profession, we call that an ellipsis. I love myself an ellipsis. <laughs> are you a serial comma? Are you an Oxford comma girl? Or Of course. Ah. I obviously stand by, I am an Oxford comma stand. I, so technology. Yes. For pandemic. So here's the deal. How did you guys take advantage of technology to make this pivot? So here's the deal. I've actually got for show and tell. Here, let me grab these things. I can't believe that I hung on to these things throughout my moves. 
This is for amazing. My various moves. This your like, camera's from here up, so yeah. show them up by so your So a while ago, this used to be my phone. And for anybody listening this on the podcast, Motorola. if you want to check out the video for this, oh, you can it's find- it's a Motorola. Yeah. Like, oh. Look okay. how adorable it, it, it is. It's like, a, it's like the like razor that didn't flip. Is it a razor? I think it's a razor. It could be. Maybe I, it is I'm a razor. I'm almost certain it's a razor. It but it's like a razor. razor. But it's a razor that didn't flip. It was like right. slightly thicker. It was like the first iteration. For people listening at home, you can find the video for this on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, look us up on YouTube. Fun oh time program. I remember that. That's the LG. Is this, it slides. No, this is more. This is the Droid X. The oh, video version of our podcast yeah. is oh, even nice. more the of Droid a fun X. time. Right. So yeah. there's so there's the transition of, of technology here. Back when I didn't need a smartphone. Yet what years I, are we talking with these phones? Uh, this is like 2009. Nine? Wait, that's yeah. iPhone. Era. No, this must have been before Laptop Magazine. Probably. No, that's two thousand four, two thousand five. Yeah, that's probably two thousand four, two thousand five. That was like high it's school, like college. This is this is around two thousand eight or nine. This is the Droid X, right? Yeah. That's that's when the, the iPhone. The Droid was X was big. Yeah, yeah. And so this is so this is a good one. And now, yeah, if you want to literally see the exponential change of technology here, there's my yeah. there's yeah, and there's what I'm working with now. So I have the uh, Galaxy uh, S10, nice. Samsung Galaxy S10. So I so my first smartphone was an Android an Android phone and so I Android light so so I found like almost universally uh for our age group specifically um whatever your first smartphone is that's just kind of what you go with kind of because yeah. and this is how those markets were were sort of set up starting with when Steve like Steve envisioned a closed end to end system Steve Jobs mm -hmm. um so he like he he envisioned um Apple controlling the hardware and the software and everything in between yeah and that's pretty much what uh he ended up uh, getting. Mm -hmm. And so with Android, that's sort of happening with Google, with uh, Google, even though, I mean, there's more developers involved, there's more options with Android, different manufacturers. But if you have an Android device and you get Android compatible, everything for your smart home, mm -hmm. you know, then, then why it would you start you buying, after, after you spent $5,000 on Android stuff, why would you start buying Apple? You know what right. I mean? Right. And vice system. versa. Yeah. So right. it's just, and it's just a, it's just like a, you know, just a, um, a, so, a user preference. Like so if you get used to the OS, right, exactly. you like How what you like. How did this affect your ability to so, pivot. So here's where it goes. In the pandemic. Back when I was working for Laptop Magazine, we were all crowing about 3G. All right? Right. During, I remember that. Before so, 3G, smartphones were severely limited in their ability to browse the internet. I, I basically, I had yeah. an iPhone. I never used the web browser yep. because it yeah. was just so slow. You could use it, you could use it on, on, um, email maybe on, on Wi-Fi, but even on Wi-Fi, like yeah. the, the, the speed of the phones just weren't there. So you used, you used your laptop after the 3G phones came in. It was like, all of a sudden you could actually use your phone for this stuff. So, and similarly, like when you, on 3G, you take two steps down to the subway, you lost a call. Right. Like Whereas were, now we have freaking connection on the L train through the whole East river. Yeah. And so, so that came in this year. So I, so I noticed specifically, oh, I like I, I, yeah, it's cause you don't ride the subway. No, more. <laughs> I don't. seriously, the whole yeah. Bedford, Bedford Avenue station to first Avenue under the East river, you have connection the entire way. I'm like, what is the point of this? I mean, I know what the point is, but like, damn, that's yeah. nuts. Well, that is something Sometimes. that is something that, um, many metropolitan areas in, uh, East Asia have been enjoying for I the know, last of decade. Course, of yeah, course, we're, like, yeah, like, so, like we're just like I, I think we're number seven on the planet for internet speeds. Yeah, I'm average still going to be surprised yeah. and and bedazzled when they add internet between subway stops. I was bedazzled right. when they added internet in the subway stops. That was so cool. But now that's going in between them, like what? We are just going to be connected full time all the time, plugged into the matrix. Give me my Neuralink, Elon Musk. I'm ready. Sign me up. So 3G, 3G. <laughs> then we progress to 4G, and we're about to get, and we're about to be rolling out 5G Which right now. Which caused the coronavirus so, pandemic. Actually, I heard I heard right. that story. Oh, absolutely. We all we all know that. <laughs> Obviously, those signals. Where's my tinfoil hat? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm wearing I'm wearing mine, but this is made of a nice merino wool. <laughs> <laughs> Protects you from the 5G. <laughs> Protects me from crazy humans. Ah, I can't hear any of them. Got the shielding ah. in there. Oh, I'm completely protected from crazy humans everywhere. Great. I don't I don't see any of them around. Not a single one. Um, oh my god. But uh, so yeah, so four so four G came out and that facilitated very much so the hustle that you and I enjoyed for the right. last ten years. So right. that that allowed that allowed uh, freelance employers to and colleagues to interact with each other in real time. Mm -hmm. And so being able to work for twenty different uh, employers at once that was not physically possible. Right. right. You're running around the streets of New York answering emails, responding to so texts. so literally so there you go. So there's one thing right there until there until smartphones were a ubiquitous, affordable consumer friendly device for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, 
and, and it, once businesses started to recognize that iPhones were more than just a uh, music device, right. and they started uh, adding extra encryption layers and making it more secure for business. Mm -hmm. uh, because up in that up in that point in time, when Apple entered the game, uh, BlackBerry had seventy percent market share right, worldwide right, right. for yeah. smartphones. And how'd that work out for them? Well, I don't know where they're at right now. <laughs> <quite frankly. laughs> Right. <laughs> so one of the things that facilitated my current hustle is the fact that for the last uh, seven years, I've been maintaining two different Instagram accounts. And one of them was for TG, the artist and writer and actor and fitness model and whatever else uh, there. Mm -hmm. um, and when I started Bart, what was the name of that one? Uh, Teej Machine. Right. Yay. Yeah, it was an old college nickname. I don't know whoever called me Teej Machine at, in college, but thank you for that, whoever that dude was, um, because I'm sure it was one of probably one of my fraternity brothers. Yeah, I was about to say, that sounds like a <laughs> name that you would get at a yeah. frat party. Hey, Teej Machine. Here, yeah, let's do a tank stand. You are totally you, stiff. You're next up with a tank you, stand. You absolutely <laughs> were playing beer pong when you got the name oh Teej Machine. God. I can, Maybe. I can already see it. Like, Guys, it, that... Or flip cup. Guys, I played beer Maybe. pong with vodka once. What a nightmare that day first was. Of all, first of all, oh, uh, I made some I just, bad mistakes. I'm going to go ahead and throw this out there. I'm a, such a ridiculous person. I don't drink beer under any circumstances. I said so, me too. That's true. I brought you beer once. You nosy. You put your nose right in the air. And I did do exactly <laughs> that. Snobbery. I am yep. a, I'm a bougie bitch. I will admit it. That's why they invented White Claw. But uh, <laughs> that Rawr. being said. It was uh, for your. <laughs> I've been playing uh, drinking games since I was 21. Yeah. With like vodka the entire time. And then I switched to like when I used well, to that play. that explains a lot when i used to play kickball um in mccarran park back in the day in brooklyn <laughs> kickball whoop, whoop, shout out um we used to pre-game at the turkey's nest and i would get um like an eight ounce cup of um like 70 percent like uh ciroc um coconut oh man um is that is that pete diddy's liquor yes it is nice. and then it was 10 percent uh pineapple juice and uh, or no, 20% pineapple juice and 10% ice. Oh. And like, mm. it was so fucking strong. And like, you only Ugh. needed two of them to get wrecked. And then I would go and like, I'd have like two throughout the course of the, like the three or four hours that would be on the field. And then we'd go to the bar and play flip mm. cup. And that's what I would be drinking to play flip cup. Whoa. So I'm a ridiculous Boom. human. I'm a girl from Ohio where drinking is basically a competition at all times. I'm so a hydro homie. Hey, you know what? Tell that to the, the girls from my old softball team that were drinking mad dogs on the field <laughs> as as we've got i would i would fill up uh like oh what was my oh my gosh I, this is a different version of me back in the day this is i was on that softball league that's when i tore my second acl wow. uh i was up to bat wait, wait, wait how many acl replacements have you had just the two just the two <laughs> um but it was playing softball that i did it and uh, I, I meaning the, you had the, your original then you had it replaced then you tore that and then you had it replaced again Correct. And it was during that softball game, the You're last game of the season. It, yeah. Well, I mean, the next the next replacement, I imagine, should be nice and uh, silvery. Yeah. Maybe hydraulic. I want yeah. I want yeah. the brain chip. <laughs> I'm going right to the brain. My body's good, man. I want the brain. Well, it's brain enhancement. But then it's but then is it hackable? Yep. Please, I I intend to hack it myself. Ah, but then who else will? Yeah, bring it on. Well. Have you seen, there's this, uh, there's, oh man, there's this wonderful, there's this wonderful uh, movie called, I think it's called Alita Death Angel or something mm -hmm. like that. It's a sci-fi, just, it's, it's a PG-13, mm -hmm. um, but basically it's, it, <laughs> you know it's, your it's, ratings. It's in the like, well, because it could have gotten <laughs> a lot more, it, it would have got, gotten a lot darker and more noir, like Sin City style, mm -hmm. if, uh, if it had been R-rated because it, in PG-13, so just imagine a world where wherever you want, whenever you want, you can go get an upgrade on any limb that you right. have. Somebody chops it off, you go get a new one. The Expanse is a great yeah. show out right now that kind of touches on that a little bit, these modifications that people can have. I love The Expanse. And, yeah. and, and, they're, and uh, honestly, from all the research that I've done from the nerdery that I do in the background of my life. Um, they're very, they're very, thorough. they're very thorough and they're very spot on with what we currently know about astrophysics. And I'm, quantum I'm obsessed mechanics, with the expanse. Stuff. I'm, I'm absolutely in love with Avasarala. Is that oh. her name? Christian Avasarala. Oh my God. I, uh, I, I Christian. Love Oh my god. I, I don't Lord. know any of the my actors' heart. names. I just love the show. Um, she's it's, amazing. And she's which, a which, which one is she? 
Uh, Which she's, character? She's, she's Tris- Christian. She's the one that the has head of the, the UN, like the head of the UN that has the amazing. Oh, she's like, like my favorite. I know. She's oh, such a badass. I know. She is. She's such a badass. She is the oh personification of a cat in human form. She is like phenomenal. She's like, she's like yeah. she's sly and like foxy, but at the same time, she's yeah. like I am she just so in love with this woman. Into yes. a room like a fucking cat, and just the way she just like sits there just like yes. looking at oh and, and she's always got and i bet and here's another reason why i know you, here's her. another reason why i know that you like her, is her because her neckwear ah, is always on point her entire outfit her from outfits head to are her hair is, 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 is fucking true. amazing Every, true. everything her about her presence. everything about her every single time she's wearing orange i yeah. just like melt her every orange outfit is oh, just like, so oh phenomenal my God. now that oh. they got amazon money about you look at season one you look at season three yes. now that there's amazon money behind their makeup and special effects i I yes, sw- I swear to God, I swear to God, last episode of the first season, I I saw I saw some of the prosthetics peeling on a scar on one of the actors yeah. on a close up. Yeah. I was like, was it I found a close up. Yeah, and you're like, it, because it was still sci fi season yeah. one. Yeah, and then and then Amazon picked it up, and I was just like, oh yeah. man. It was. I was like, it was in the finale, bro. Whoever the special effects guy knows, been kicking himself forever. Do you remember when oh. sci-fi used to be this like weird, you know, kind of alternative channel that was kind of like just junky to television? It was like yeah. never good. I mean, you had it Stargate was like the B stuff, but it was it was very B level. Yeah. And yeah. now yeah. now they're doing sci-fi, like, like mystery but they science also, theater. But they also had Battlestar Galactica. If it, it, yeah. it wasn't. I mean, it wasn't as good as something like an HBO miniseries. Sure, you know what I mean. The, Whereas now yeah. you have The Expanse, which feels like. We can we can have that debate, <laughs> but I so, am not so, a uh, Battlestar Galactica fan. But I know that there is plenty of people who would no. Just like- uh, the Battle, Battlestar Galactica <laughs> is amazing. They, they they did amazing things for sci fi, but the quality of the production they do great work is not yeah, at Battle the Star level. Galact- they do right, great work. It, those guys they didn't have the budget, right? Because it was but it was also older. it was also older. So yeah. talking about the Expanse now, I mean, I, I'm just so blown away by the blown away by the Expanse. Christian Avasarala. I wish I could pronounce the the actress's name. She has a beautiful yeah. Persian name. Um, Kamina Drummer. Oh my God, the the polyamorous Belter family that like live on a ship together and they're all in I love just, with each I other. I just literally put that together in the last episode or so that yeah, they must a lot all, of people, that they must all be in one relationship because yes. they they seem to have a rotation. It's I, so I just beautiful. put this together. I was just like they seem to have some sort of rotation. <laughs> it's it's such a I'm like, it's yeah. such a beautiful. I love, I love that. That's like <laughs> it. Like I love that's that that. that that's how monogamous people come around to it. Like, oh wait, is that what's actually? Well, it's going a beautiful on? portrayal of because, it because they show them but, fighting. But for open-minded yeah. monogamous people, because I because yeah, here, here was my because here was my transition of thought process. I was just like, I was like, okay, here's this character. Mm-hmm. Then then I saw her in bed with that other woman. I was like, okay, so so these are two uh, lesbian characters, I suppose. These are this is their. Uh, so I didn't know that until this point, and now I'm seeing that character with another character, and that's and and that's a male character. So okay, so bisexual. Wait, Wait a second, but now there's three and they're on the same and ship. Think, Hang on I a think second. This, was the this first, sounds like a kind of a community. Oh, this that, this <laughs> was the first season where they showed it explicitly, but it was always kind of hinted at in the Belter communities, you know, that 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 there was that people were more friendly with each other than than what you were used to seeing in sort of Earth and Mar- Martian communities. Well, I think more of an well, because it's just like uh because Belters were raised in it without the uh Without the same constraints of Christianity, exactly, and, and the nuclear exactly. family, exactly. So, so it, like in space, one of the things that like uh, uh, one of the things that I really appreciate it uh, appreciate out in space is that there's just like there's really not a lot of time for bullshit. Nope. There's a billion ways to die on planet Earth in this wonderful atmosphere we've got around our ears right now. But if you're up in space and you make one or two mistakes, you're just fucking dead. Yep. Yeah. And I and I love that. And, and, yeah, and I and that's I, harsh. And I and I meant and so imagine being raised in that for a few generations where it's just like hey hey Billy you know it's not like it's not like the lesson of like hey Billy don't go play by the road there's cars that can just buy. I'd be like, hey, Billy, if you press that button, the airlock opens and we're all fucking dead. So maybe don't do that. Yeah. And I always wondered if that actually would happen. And then, if, on an and then if he does, you just never hear that family again because they're yeah. in the middle of nowhere in space, harvesting mm-hmm. ice. Right. From the from series. We love the expanse. I, I oh, hope man. we can get one of the actresses on or actors on the show because they're killing it. Do right you guys now. remember it's, that episode where like the, the like wait, 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 ice whoa, harvest- whoa, 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 hmm? hold on. Vivica's a little behind here. Yes. Spoilers. She's because she's not, not caught everyone up. Everyone is not not everyone is caught up. Ah, uh, let's I, get back to all right. Pandemic yes. technology. How you guys made the pivot? So let's pivot with purpose. We'll back up from pre expanse times. <laughs> um, we, I want to get to the future, which, man. Which isn't that, which isn't that far, you know? Honestly, like the the technology that we have. So, anyways, yeah, I I fully expect to live to see what they're depicting in the expanse. Just throwing that out there. Like I fully intend to live that long. Well, I was just, uh, I was just reading um, a couple of days ago about a concept for uh, essentially um, 
essentially imagine just the ISS times a thousand, mm-hmm. and just and it comes together like connects blocks, yeah. like Legos. You see the new at, Starship, the, at, the SpaceX Starship. They can meet at at the 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 bottom of them. They can hook that, up. It, you can hook four of them together into a cross. Okay, they're going to be launching these things like freaking Tic Tacs, man. Right. Like mm-hmm. the next decade, we're going to be having starships flying around our freaking solar system and they're going to be doing all kinds of crazy shit. Like there's going to be hotels in space, hotels on the moon, hotels yeah. on Mars. The belt is going to be a real thing. What is the belt? The belt is the asteroid belt. You got Ceres, you got uh, Ganymede, the moons of, of, of Jupiter and Saturn. Like these places are going to be inhabited by humans and we're going to live to see it. I'm so excited for it. But we're still not finished with your pandemic story. We're still not. We're still not. Your tangent. This is what happens when you put a bunch of ADD game. kids in a room together and no, get them just tell one. them to do a podcast. Just one. I want to hear about how you transition. Are you pivoted just with purpose? someone interrupting me? That's accurate. I'm trying to bring us back to the thread here. All right. Well, back to the thread. Back into the five G era because we're so we're just now. All right. So so right now we're in a world where. Um, in first world countries, uh, if you have access to it in the area and the a- access to it um, just with your income um, and and just whatever, 5G is starting to become available. Mm-hmm. All right. And so 4, 4G already allowed us allowed us to fac- facilitate that hustle that you and I were talking about before. And uh, and right along with it, Wi-Fi speeds have been increasing and increasing yeah. and increasing. I remember back in the day, back with my 56K modem, it took me 20 minutes to see a boob. Oh, my God. Right. <laughs> You know? oh. And it was only a still image. It's just that still image. Yeah, and it was a statue from the from the Louvre. Right. You know, it was like this less is dis- po- like less terrible quality so porn. It was like my my teenage self didn't have much access better to off any just good watching porn. scrambled fucking cable. How much is porn responsible? I, have, for I was the- better off figuring out what was on UPN eleven after eleven p.m. Hey. UPN, hey, oh. that is a throwback. I grew up grew up with that without a television, yeah. but I still get that reference. That's right. A little fuzzy, but they had some weird stuff after 11 p.m. Really? It was it wasn't girls after gone t- wild after, yet. after 10 p.m. It was like after 10 p.m. basic cable turned into a weird yeah. free for all of like back in the day that's in the 90s. Swim got started. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's right. Oh man. So so the, all right, so there we are with all that technology and this fast Wi-Fi and the ability to do Zoom and Instagram live and all that stuff. Um and on top of that, like the stuff the, the technology that we're all talking on right now, none of us could afford 10 years ago. Right. No way. Right. And so, so that's that's a big thing. Is that like as at like uh, c- the best consumer technology and technology in general, um, but specifically consumer level, uh, it always you know it comes to the one percenters first. Mm-hmm. You know, and it comes to major metropolitan areas first because that's where most of the marketing and advertising right. money go. Because of the big business yeah. too. You know, it's and, not for consumers. It's for right. you know professional. Not to mention use. your early adopters usually have more money to spend mm-hmm. and play around with this technology. Right. Like, like as opposed to if you don't have a lot of money. Uh, like where technology is now, you could wait a few models. Like the first model of a phone might mm-hmm. be okay, but two models later will be awesome. Right. So if you just wait a couple of years, then you'll get a better phone. Exactly. For, for the same. And, and so because of Moore's law, which we're about to run out of if we haven't yeah, already. They've been saying that since yeah. the eighties. <laughs> well, however it works, I actually um I actually think I I think I just recently read somewhere there's a bit of a misnomer is that like uh, it, uh Moore's law it actually um capacity either it doubles or maybe it's a 2.5 every year. I don't know. Um, but I think, I think the, the generality of it is that t- the uh, processing power doubles every year. It's um, every two years. Is it every two years? Yeah. All right. So maybe that was a clarification that I okay. recently, um, but anyways, we're going to, we're about to see quantum computing uh, take off, which means like right now, um, you know, we've, we've uh, shoved as many, uh, transistors as we possibly can on like on a silicone chip. Mm-hmm. And, right. and we're getting so, down to the four nanometer right. So current computing is based Spacing. on so current, so for so for those who aren't in the know on this one because most prob- most people probably aren't necessarily like um, casual on this on this sort of verbiage but like w- the way that our current CPUs work the way the processors work is that there's that uh, we've crammed as much uh, basic transistors onto a silicone chip I, if I'm getting this properly uh, proper as we can at the moment multiple for, for, chips right so that so, work together you've got these multiple cores you've got multiple layers on the chips and so and the, then but co- companies like Apple have gone a completely different direction and created their own new M1 chip now that is basically beating the pants off of so, off of uh, Intel and Intel can't compete because they can't get down to the four nanometer level quickly enough and it's it's so where I'm going with that is yes. right now right now there's a there's a finite amount of space that you can right. cram onto, so you onto need a, a silicone chip. Through. Right. So the way that those work is that is that a computer is constantly doing one process at a, a CPU is doing one process right. at a time. 
but it's doing it so fast that it seems like it's doing multiple at once. Right. From our perspective, you right. add, you add more cores. You're doing multiple more and more, more. Yeah. Uh, but the way that quantum computing works is that you're not you're not uh, you're doing multiple processes at once. Right. Processes rather. Um, and so instead of just doing one thing at a time very quickly, you can do lots of things all the same time. And right. some of them are interrelated because of uh, spooky, spooky action at a distance, perhaps. Mm -hmm. And so once we get a hold of this, like the quantum realm. Yes, I'm in the middle of reading the three body problem trilogy. I love oh, it. that's a great trilogy. Oh, my gosh. I, I'm obsessed with it. And, yeah. so, and so now I'm obsessed with the quantum realm. <laughs> as if I wasn't already. And, um, and just like the relativity of time and how it, like it's a wonderful narrative. Um, not to mention the number, like a Hugo Award winning novel that was, uh, if not the number one best selling novel in the People's Free Republic of China, which the context of that fascinates me from a publishing perspective. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's very interesting. Um, because the way that the way that uh, the, the rest story of the really covers the history of China as well. And it, and it starts out in the in the Cultural Revolution of China. In the but 60s. it even goes further back and it deals with stuff from like way back in the day, but like rewriting yeah. history in this weird way. It's it's, it's a fascinating story. Yeah. And it's all from the perspective of of. Uh, you know, communist China. Right. Like who, who is in, Well, it has who, to be because otherwise yeah. you can't publish it. <laughs> exactly. And so, so that's what's very interesting to me is that this is a story that was released under the very strict control mm -hmm. of, of the government. And has been very successful you with know? their and that's So I'm just, so it's like, I can't help but wonder, man, what would that story be like if he was unleashed? Right. You know, as an author. You know, it's just like free, free authorial control. Um, and so, so yeah, so all that's, all that stuff has facilitated what we're doing now on top of, uh, the fact that I've worked for so many different people simultaneously over the years. Um, uh, my ADHD that again is statistically uncommon with most of the population probably has allowed me to multitask in ways that most people don't. And you've I also lived, have trained myself to use multiple forms of technology in ways that most people don't. You've and I lived find a multi-threaded lifestyle. <laughs> Yeah, to say the least. Has the pandemic forced you to focus more? It has. Very much so. I like one of the things that I'm incredibly grateful for during the time of COVID is that um I the the extraneous employers of my life were ripped away. Yep. Um going back to the going back to the like uh you know it don't, it doesn't matter so much what you what uh, people uh, why you do something just what your results are. Mm -hmm. Well, when there was no results to be had for uh, industries that were just that uh, for companies that didn't have any work to be had mm -hmm. um as TJ the freelancer, ah, are you confused Alicia? <laughs> I, 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 it's, oh, oh, I no, met no. myself. Oh, okay. The, the, I mean, now that the, we're yeah. back to the tensing again. <laughs> so, with third or fourth personality, which yeah. which one is popping out now? Uh, one and a half. <laughs> so, so when so when COVID hit, um, all of my freelancers stopped calling me. All right. freelance employers, rather, because mm -hmm. I'm not part of their core staff. Right. I'm a specialized independent contractor, mm -hmm. and right. that and that sort of work just completely dried up, especially on the high end. Like even I, the core, there's mm -hmm. nothing. There's just absolutely but, nothing. Well, the thing is, I was no core. Yeah. Because but, they, I, but even the core guys, there's nothing. I mean, there's been nothing yeah. for for years, mm -hmm. not for years, for months, <laughs> for almost a year. And that's the thing. <laughs> and so and so, it's just like, uh, yeah, like I know, like actually, I know a, a guy that I used to captain events with. He's a like, um, he's a financial advisor now for Northwestern. Wow. I believe like it, like, I mean, everybody's pivoting in different ways. Right. And so, so tell me more about your specific pivot though. During the financial crisis, that company got shuffled around. And during that shuffle, I migrated to the ESRB and Laptop Magazine got absorbed by another publishing house. Um, and I think that got absorbed by another publishing house. But long story long, I work for the future now, literally. Future PLC is the name of the publishing house, and it owns about 60 different magazines, many of them mobile tech related, many of them lifestyle, um, home, outdoors, uh, travel, all sorts of different, all sorts of different uh, topics. Um, but again, the technology for uh, one publishing house to, to be in control in a, such a dynamic way of all those different magazines, um, I don't think that that was possible. Um 10, 12 years ago. And so when I started freelancing for them again, I hadn't been using WordPress or any mo or any software that th that my fellow editors had been using for 10 years. That's a long time. That's a long time. To not, to not do it. And so I, so. That'll age you out of being able to use it. And I was actually a bit concerned when I started for, uh, for them. I was just like, have, has everybody been adapting while I have spent too much time out of the industry and I can no longer adapt to the software quickly enough to produce the results that we're talking about. Right. Uh, because at the end of the day, if you in New York city as a freelance journalist, if you can't make deadlines, 
then what good are you? Right. right. And, and I do my very, and especially writing for multiple entities, I'm, I'm constantly juggling deadlines best I can. Mm-hmm. Um, it, but, and I really enjoy the things that I'm, that I'm writing about. Like I, 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 pre- I really appreciate all of the editors that I work with and I appreciate all of the entities that I write for. And I, and I appreciate learning the literally, right. literally one of the uh, magazines I write for is called tech and learning. <laughs> nice. Yeah. And, um, I, it, like, I love learning about things that I, that I, uh, you know, discover in this world. And because technology is so intuitive um, and is meant to be intuitive nowadays in ways that uh, it didn't used to be in the 90s, mm-hmm. you know, uh, like I can pick up one of these devices and figure out how to use it. And so I, I really appreciate mm-hmm. that as a tester. So I review mobile tech. One of the one of my um, uh, one of the aspects of being a fr- uh, freelance uh, tech journalist, uh, it, I guess not everybody's, but I review mobile technology. Yeah. So so, for example, um, this yeah, this this uh, bubble helmet with what this, was the name of it this, again this is the uh, it was 3d printed so we're going to give this a pass for this for this uh the housing for the fan but this is the, the covidizer COVID-izer. you know so i'm going to do it i'm going to do a hands-on um with this with the covidizer yeah, wow you know and uh mm-hmm. it, and i and i really appreciate being able to you know see where the development of such a product is going right. and it's directly based on the sociology that's happening around me in new york city yep. and based at, using pre-existing technology that could be augmented at any time you could use noise cancellation technology yeah. like inside that bubble i can't hear a lot right now but this is five mindful partnerships away from being a very viable consumer friendly uh, device. Cause and, like if it had a speaker yeah. in and a mic mm-hmm. and, um, like a speaker in and out so that like you could hear in and out like the iPod. Clearly. So like the iPod, uh, the AirPod pros. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they have noise cancellation technology, you know, and they also have like the ambient, ambient noise thing. Right. And so, so, so imagine maybe you've got Bluetooth headphones while you wear this and that's hooked up to the helmet yeah. that allows you to the pipe in sound. So that's just outside. one way. Like I have, I have a, yeah. I, I have a pair of Bluetooth uh, cans where if you hold your hand up to one side of the can, it lets in ambient noise. Oh, wow. That's and, so like, cool. like I love it. Um, and so th- that's the thing is it like in the time of COVID, Wait, every journalist, a Bluetooth can, Cans, like the ones you're wearing. These are cans. Can oh, headphones. Oh, okay. Cans. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. No, these are Bluetooth headphones. Yeah. <laughs> cans are yeah. over, over ear. Oh, yes. I didn't. Yeah. I've, over, never heard, I've, oh, I've yeah. never heard them call that. Oh, yeah. That's cans and over ear. Yeah, you learn something new every That's day. That's what they call them in the biz. Yeah. Boom. Right. I, I, I taught you something yeah. new. Which, That's fine. Which, I, I love yeah. my cans. It's fine. I didn't so we, know. we talk about diversity a lot on this program because yeah. we, we have really explored all the different ways that diversity is important for uh, not just uh, survival, but to be able to thrive. Yeah. Um, how important was your ability to kind of diversify your skill set during the time that you were here in New York? How important was that to you being able to survive the pandemic? Because people who came mm. here who were like relying on one thing and then that one thing disappeared, they moved home. The people who stayed were the ones who already knew how to pivot, how to transition, how to use this skill set to take advantage of that opportunity and were always ready to take on whatever the new opportunity was. How important was that in your sort of like pre-pandemic mm. New York City experience that enabled you to make make this transition so that you were able to thrive post-pandemic? That's a, that's a great question. Uh, I would say that uh, I would say that it has been pivotal for my sort of thrival in New York um, to have all these different skill sets. So, like I mentioned before, like the whole farming aspect, I I, I meditate on that sometimes about how um, my my dad, the dairy farmer, uh, like um, uh, you know by osmosis, taught me all these different skill sets. Like he, everything was it was kind of his way or the highway for uh, for barn chores around my around my home. My dad has, is very specific about how he does his stuff, and I was learning the whole time. I now mm-hmm. know, like I've I've picked up like uh, just between uh, childhood and, and moving to New York, I picked up some uh, casual carpentry skills and mechanics skills yeah. and, uh, you know, being able to build things and, and figure out how things work without, uh, without having to ask your dad who will yell at you for not knowing how things work, you right, know, that, exactly. that'll, that'll condition you sometimes to figure out how things work all on your own. Mm-hmm. And so, and that very much bleeds into, uh, as a mobile tester. So I'm often, so for example, if I'm uh, testing a piece of mobile technology, uh, for example, uh, my next review is going to be a webcam, mm-hmm. a 1080, uh, 1080p webcam that, quite frankly, didn't exist just five years ago. That technology, that's how fast it's moving. That nice. that sort of consumer friendly level uh, webcam would have been five, six hundred dollars. Why mm-hmm. are they still 1080p? Is that what most people are consuming? Yeah. The hum- I- the human eyeball is only capable of of uh, of appreciating a certain number of pixels. But 4K is pretty standard these days. Uh, but um, for a certain size of screen. 
Interesting. Yeah. So okay. like, the, so the smaller the screen, so for example, you might take an incredible picture on your phone. Right. It's not 4K. But, you can't but you might, 4K but you might not, screen. But you might not know it's an incredible picture until you see it on a 4K screen. Right. So like a television, yeah. for example, is a, is a 4K size. It's got 4,000 pixels spread right. out over so many inches because you right. can do three, 300 DPI mm -hmm. pixels yeah. per inch. And we're pretty much, PPI. and I think it, like I could be mistaken because this is not my expertise for monitors. I know a little bit about that stuff. Um, but the human eyeball is only capable of of taking in certain spectrums of light, and so and and there's a certain threshold of pixels that you get to the point where it then you just your eyeball won't even notice. You know, it's so funny. Yeah. I bought this 4K yeah. monitor, and I've been using it this whole time. And the other day, I went to check the resolution on it. I've been using it at 1080p. Yep. <laughs> and I switched it to 4K, and everything got so small on the monitor that it was like I don't actually want to use it at this size. Yeah. I needed it at the larger size. So simply having a ton of pixels crammed into a small amount of space isn't necessarily useful for for the way that we use technology. Well, it all depends on what platform, because right. if, because that's the thing. Certain pixels. So, for example, uh, like when I'm popular, like for example, uh, yeah. I, well, we were all setting up. I had a, I had a little bit of editorial chores to do. I had mm -hmm. to populate one of my articles with um, some art mm -hmm. screenshots, and specifically, they needed to be sixteen by nine. Mm -hmm. And and if I if I can, you know, uh, like over uh, if I could do like over uh, two thousand by something. Uh, for that, like that's big enough. So right. you, kind of, you kind of get in your head of the idea of the sort of pixels that you need for a certain space. 2048 is usually the width right. that, you, that you're going for for web-sized image. There you, so, oh yeah, there you go, 2048. So for example, that'd be different than say an icon that I put in my signature. Right, my which email. would be like 64 yeah. pixels or something. Yeah, yeah. 256. So so you, you were working with this webcam. So- uh, that's what I was going to say. It's like so. It's very useful for me um, with this entire background. Like I'm, I'm going to be uh, reviewing this webcam from a consumer standpoint. Right. So I'm. So it's like I kind of put myself in that mindset when I review something. I'm like, all right. So let's say that somebody just delivered this to me. I just, I just purchased this. Happened, yeah. I know nothing about this thing. Let me take it out of the and box. Now and now I'm going to use it, it and I'm going to try to figure it out and put it in context with how I would use it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like I, I just uh, another another review I have coming up. Uh, Samsung just uh, released a their smart tags. I think they announced them over CES. It's like a it's like a key finder. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it does much more than that. It attaches to um, my Philips Hue lighting system Dope. that's in my that, that's in my home which is attached to my Amazon smart speaker because they're both Android devices and I can and so and I haven't actually filled out uh figured out the full compatibility and functions of it. It's just a little it's a little tiny piece of plastic with mm -hmm. a button yeah. and it can do a whole bunch of stuff like you can set routines for your lighting. Mm -hmm. You can so have when it when you walk in and walk out it turns your lights on and off yeah. because it knows where your keys are. Yeah. And because and the and one of the reasons I got it is um because I, I'm a Samsung user mm -hmm. and because it's a Samsung device, it'll have compatibility across those devices in the same way that um, the, the headphones that I came here wearing are Bose headphones, yeah. which have an Apple H1 chip in them, which means that whenever I turn them on in my home, which this happened at last yeah, night, Alicia, did. <laughs> whenever I turn them on in my home, they automatically connect no matter what to one of my fiance's devices or Apple. The closest Apple so, device. And that's another thing, actually, a good synergy that uh, Tara and I have is that she's always been an Apple user and I've always been a Windows Android user. So when I, te so uh, she has an Apple. Uh, Loser. Hey, hey. Oh, hey, our technology is pretty fucking great. Hey, so. good luck with your customization, bro. Uh, it's fine. It's fine. But, it's um, just preference. But here's, but the thing is, it's just like, all right, first of all, you will both have a different relationship with Apple if you have to spend hours of your life every week on the phone with their PR contacts per, yep. because it's part of your job. And then, and well, well, everything's well, well, under why? NDA because I used to fact check, uh, I used to fact check for Laptop Magazine. So part of my job for fact checking would be literally calling up PR contacts and being like, hey, so we're about to release our review of, uh, of the new um, Apple iPod Pro. Um, the configuration that you guys sent us, uh, I just wanted to confirm all the specs um, the, because all those specs based on the price point directly affect the five star rating of the review. The right. There's a value factor, right. right? you know, and so uh, but Apple has certain um, just, you know, they, they just have certain things under NDA. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and they, they just have certain policies where it's just like, um, I don't know if it's still like this, but I think at the time, I think their pro the name of their processes were under NDA. So even if I had the laptop open and, and, and um, you could see all I the could see the processor, doing, you couldn't talk like, about it. Like, or well, they weren't allowed to talk about it. Mm. And so it's like, so I do, so it's like, and there, and so there's a give and take of that relationship uh, of, of, uh, of respect for journalists and PR contacts because PR contacts are constantly representing companies that are pushing the envelope of technology and the PR contacts are looking for early adopters, but also, um, a consumer base. And, but, but, uh, but the first iteration of most technology is, is, isn't always the best and consumer ready. 
So oftentimes you want you want to beta test your stuff. You want to have early adopters to give mm. you extra feedback. But then Steve went and conditioned everybody to getting fully baked products out of the box. Right. And, yep. and so and so it was just like uh, so it's like I appreciate when there's bugs for initial iter- iterations because you can use your feedback to help developers want that feedback. Right. You know when I test products, developer like I I look for things that are wrong because developers love that. Right. And manufacturers love that because then the next they can version on it, yeah, exactly. Because and they'd never have this information if you didn't if they didn't have a consumer uh, level somebody to test it. Mm-hmm. But then also to take that and put it into words, right? And and to articulate that process. And so um, it's very specific. You know, it's like a, for, like there's a different process for reviewing a laptop that that there's a standard to it for each publication, um, but there's not a standard to reviewing. A, a bubble helmet. Right. <laughs> I, I guess I'll have to create that little little standard as I as I go along. What's your What's your take on this bubble helmet so far? So can you can you give us a, a rundown? Like, what's your the sixty second so here's review? A, well, my, my here's my sixty second review. All right, time me. Yeah. So this this thing is made out of all pre existing technology right now. So this is basically a, a uh, here. I'll hold this up for the camera for the context of it here. Um, so this is, uh, <laughs> this thing is amazing. I have to keep it a little higher. I'm gonna unplug, amazing. It. I'm gonna unplug it here. So basically what you, what, what is what the plug got, for? What does it need to plug in for the battery? That's so, a battery pack. That's separate from the helmet. Why couldn't they house it on the helmet? This is a prototype. Got you. Right. So, I mean, it could, it could be housed in the helmet, but then it's just making it heavier. So mm-hmm. this is already, so this is a polycarbonate globe mm-hmm. that inside is just a crystal clear construction helmet. So that's that's pre-existing, right. like that's meant to 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 fit on your head, be, right. be customized to it, and protect your head. And that's what makes it comfortable, and that's what holds it on your head, right? Got so it. that's what's what's sitting on there. Uh, this is basically so it's not resting on your shoulders; it's resting on your head. It's resting on your head. Oh, that's, that's so why it can move around. Oh, so right? when your head moves, it follows. That's right? so cool. Right. So you've got these two. These are two. Uh, standard filters, uh, the N95s. Right. Yeah. So all the air coming into yeah. it is being so, filtered. So you can, and you can take these on, you know, <clears throat> I'll just kind of demonstrate this, yeah. these come off. Right. You know, and, and that can, and that can just, uh, put back on. So these guys are just 3d printing a whole bunch of connectors. And, and so, and, and so this is a 3d printed housing. Right. For the fan. Which is so cool. What you is know? the purpose of the fan? The fa- well, because you're creating an exhaust system, because what happens is when you put this on, this is basically a neck gator. And so, in order for in order for these filters to work properly, you need to create a some a semi seal inside right. the globe. Mm-hmm. So you're not so, pulling air up through your neck. Right. So right. you're so you're pulling you're basically just pulling a neck gator, you know, like like it, so that's just that's like tight but not uncomfortable around your neck. These are two filters that already exist, and that's and that and this exhaust fan is pulling the air out there. So you constantly have clear. So that would be the so as soon as I wear this without that on, it starts to fog up. Yep. And you'd get carbon monoxide. You wouldn't have any fresh air. Mm-hmm. It would be so. The whole point. Oh, is... Oh, because you'd just be recirculating your own air constantly. Right. So yeah. you need the air flow. Right. And so, so that's the thing. Is it like to have that sort of to have that sort of uh, environment of clean air? You have to have air circulation Even power. And and uh, and it can't be powered by your own breathing. Yeah. And guess where else I learned it learned this and it came into play when you're building your own voiceover booth. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because you need airflow in there. Because really, be, because the 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 um. The sound of a fan is going to mess up the microphone, so so you can't have a fan inside a voiceover Wait, booth. Why do you need airflow in a voiceover booth? Have you ever sat in a voiceover booth by yourself for six hours? Let's assume that <laughs> both me and our listeners have not. Why do you need airflow in a voiceover booth? It's very stuffy. Yeah. So so stuffy. it's very so imagine you. so so, ima- so you're, you you need circulation of air because otherwise it's the same air sitting in there and it's so well sealed yes. that you don't have air. So imagine the cushions that Got you're it. sitting on lining the walls and ceiling and floor. Right. Because you're basically got a padded room that's got as much ins- that's insulated as much as possible to shield you from outside noise. Wow. Because in this in the same way that we're trying to uh, shoot shoot this podcast on video in such a way where there's minimal editing, mm-hmm. um, because because of uh, you know extraneous video. Mm-hmm. If you have extraneous sound with the microphones, then it takes forever to to edit that out. And right. so the the quieter your environment is, like this is wonderful what you guys have here. Mm-hmm. Well, in uh in our apartment on the other side of our closet is our our neighbors who uh is right a, uh, one's a grandmother with two grandkids she that she babysits sometimes yeah unpredictably. And, and, and they're so, very loud. Right. And so it's like Tara can do auditions and submissions like short little snippets here and there when she hears that the neighbors aren't home. Yeah. It's like, ah, and perfect. Also, and also our neighbor's husband has a TV. Whenever he's home, the TV's on. Uh, right. And so, and those sound frequent, because we share the wall, 
it's impossible to completely isolate those frequencies that you have to have a room within a room structure, mm -hmm. right? It is the ideal. And so we have a, we have almost that, but one wall shares the wall. So you, you had to build a fan into the system in order to, to get airflow in the, in the, well, for the, for, uh, for the case of what we have going on, like, um, in our home, there's like cracks or, or, along the door. So there's enough of an airflow where, okay. where Tara will take breaks. She'll like go in there and like, like work for like a half hour, come take a break mm -hmm. and it. then do so like it. So she'll be editing and recording at the same time and then take breaks. But she also, um, her brother, um, who I can simultaneously, uh, plug, uh, Griffin Novi. Yeah. Griffin Novi is a, a wonderfully uh, talented musician who just released his first album over the last year. Nice. <laughs> Congratulations, yeah, Griffin. Yeah. Some, some snaps over here. Nice. He, um, and it's, it's a fantastic, I don't, I don't even know how to describe it. It's like, um, oh man. It, it's like a, a psychedelic alt pop fun, funk. He, he covers every genre. I, I guarantee I'm butchering whatever I would say. So I'm not going to do it. <laughs> well, I, and forward, I will just, I would say, yeah. Let, I look forward to seeing him live at some point. We'll go ahead and yeah, he's, and he used to perform live, you know, yeah. back, back before. Back I mean, in the day. Like literally two months before, I think it was maybe a month, maybe a month before COVID hit. I saw one of his live shows oh, nice. and I don't know when I'll get to see him again, but he, but uh, he played, I think every instrument for everything wow. he, he like mastered everything himself so he's got his own studio uh not far from here actually really and impressive. and so he so he and his bandmates they have they have their studio space with a recording booth in there mm -hmm. so what tara and, I, and this is very I exceptional that tara has a family member who has this right um but they will allow her so she can do her submissions and uh and and auditions you know so to speak from our home and when she is booked for a project she can then take that into an actual Perfect. studio and not have to worry about noise she can be there on her own time because yeah. nice. the, the, the thing about sharing that wall is like no matter what plans we make the neighbors could walk in anytime yeah, right <laughs> you know and so, so it's just, at like three in the yeah. morning the tv's yeah. on and yeah. blaring noise and yeah. and believe it or not that's how she recorded her first book that's it's amazing. amazing. It's amazing. And, and can't so, wait to, can't like, wait to listen oh, to and it. And it's fantastic. And it, it's just like, uh, I, I. so I'd never consumed a narrative in such a way, you know, as an audio book, long form, also with two different narrators of two different genders. Yeah, that's so cool. That's fascinating. Um, and two different, uh, uh, two different uh, subspecies, I guess. Like Tara's some sort of woodland creature. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> but uh, yeah. So back to this helmet though. What's what's your, your take on this? Are people going to use this? Here's my take. So uh, this is already getting purchased. Um, by who? By people. I would. I like Early adopters. So I, I was going to say, the, the, but, but but like people like you and I, like are, are, are so, so the so average Joe's walking around in the street on the, with this. There are, there are some people, but this is I envision to be most useful for uh, government and healthcare workers that are in situations where uh, they don't need a full hazmat suit, mm -hmm. uh, but need extra protection to help the people that they're with. Mm -hmm. um, for example, I have a friend who's uh, border patrol. And he's been getting shuffled back and forth between uh, Canada and the Mexican border over the last year for mm -hmm. reasons you guys have probably heard of. Yeah. <laughs> and there's a lot. And I was talking to him the other night about um, all the separated families down there. And, and I'm, I would be curious to think, see, hear what your friends. I, you know, I was actually thinking about this the other day that. because I chatted with him for a, a little bit earlier this week. And um, I. I would love to hook you up with him and, and uh, see if he'd like to chat with you because he has a very specific firsthand experience with what's been going on. Mm -hmm. He actually was at the Capitol for the inauguration. He was wow. he was he was called in, um, so they were calling in uh, National Guard and Border Patrol to help out with the ch the checkpoints. So so you see people like Border Patrol and like government agencies wearing these things. You don't see this as being a prototype for everyday average people for like post uh, COVID worlds. Are people gonna be walking around with bubble helmets on? Is that like the future that we're looking at here? Well, let's remember that this is prototype so no, i know but like is this is this even like a, a, a serious like are we talking masks for another 10 years like are people really get, in 10 years going or even in two years going to still be worried about viruses in the same way that we are right now so yeah like a little bit of futurism here um like I, what i kind of what i kind of envision is like right now i feel like this is the most useful for like healthcare and educators who are in positions that they don't that aren't necessarily the safest for them to be in especially mm -hmm. with the different variants that, that are popping up um, so I can see, I can see there being an immediate use in this current iteration and they are, and they are selling these, these are, I think the, um, they're selling them for $300. Um, you can buy it at covidizer.org. Yep. You can buy it right now. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so we can throw a link up in there and, uh, sure but, will. but if you go to their website, they do mention, I, I am sure that I caught a spot that they really appreciate feedback from early adopters. Mm -hmm. And so where I envision our future going, well, all right, I was uh, chatting with you guys a little about this when I walked in. 
Um, the other night I walked around the park in six degree weather in my testing out some cold weather. talking wet- Fahrenheit or Celsius? Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit. So where, where were you where it was six degrees? Prospect Park South. It was that. Oh, Prospect Park. When? That was wind chill. So it was about 20 degrees. I, I must have been in this studio because I have not, not experienced that. No, yeah. <laughs> no it, was, it, it was. So I took this as, a, as an opportunity, knowing it was that cold. Um, I took that as an opportunity to test out some of the new uh, cold weather gear mm-hmm. that I had just gotten. So I walked around for two and a half hours in uh, Prospect Park. Uh, totally comfortable. Nice. The only thing that was visible was between my nose and and uh, my forehead. Mm-hmm. And so you add this globe and I basically got a space suit. Or a uh, wetsuit, mm-hmm. essentially. I mean, and that, yeah, but so, that works when it's cold. What about when it's hot out? So here's the thing: we have technology available right, uh, right uh, technology available to us right now that can do both. Mm-hmm. And and uh, there's synthetics and polymers mm-hmm. and different kinds of uh, you know materials and fabrics. Like Alicia, you could probably speak to this more than than me. But like the the way that that fabrics have been uh, able to be structured on a nano level, yeah. like, you know, nano textiling, um, yeah. that sort of, so being able to bring that cloth together, like I have a friend who just climbed a mountain in negative 25 degree wind chill. Yeah, that's fucking insane. And so whatever he was wearing, like, Saved was- his fucking life. So, so exactly. So, I mean, I, I yeah. get that, that we have the ability to create this tech. My favorite quote from Elon Musk yeah. is that really great engineers are really good at solving problems that don't need to be solved. They need yeah. to be guided in the right direction. And that's what takes somebody who can kind of like oversee and see bigger picture. Do we need this as a society? Are we talking about a post-COVID world where people are walking around or finding a need for a globe on their head to protect them from the breath of the people around them? Is that something that's going to continue um, to the point where people are willing to to slap one of these on their head and walk around with it. So the the short answer to your question is yes, this is going to continue because this pandemic is going to continue in different ways. And it, it's not just about the safety of, of you being separated with uh, by my breath. It's also about, at this point, everything's been going on long enough where the reason that this sort of thing is viable at all is because we all have a thirst for socialization that mm-hmm. cannot be satisfied when you sit alone in your apartment. Right. Now, this is more important for uh, people who live in major metropolitan areas. If you live somewhere where my family is right now, their lifestyle overall has not changed a lot. Mm-hmm. Right. They, they own They're a, already isolated. Right. They own yeah. a, if you're a homeowner, then if you're a property owner, then your life may or may not have changed a lot as far as your right. home life. Right. Mm-hmm. But when I walk outside my door, as soon as I walk outside my door, there's no way for me to fact check the germs that I encounter or where that who touched that handle, mm-hmm. who touched this or that. But you don't think the vaccine's going to come in and everybody's going to get vaccinated and this is, thing's going to be over and we're going to go back to normal life? No. So enough time has passed now that I think that we as a planet on, in first world countries specifically and especially in New York. Uh, and especially in America, where we're already starting to push uh, Spanish flu numbers uh, now for the total deaths, mm-hmm. um, I think that we're going to be a lot more vigilant about our personal space and our personal health. Like you'll notice, uh, uh, like bowing, yeah. you know, for the, the Japanese, Chinese, they had it right all along. You're not touching anybody. Nope. You know, not, not Elbows, exchange any like yeah. like all that. So bow, bowing. What a what an excellent form sure, of, res, not, of respect, not, not recognition, wearing. and right. So 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 that's so that's a cultural thing. Now, if we want to do all the crazy stuff that Americans love to do, we're going to need a little protection. And so I can invent. So I already People don't even want to wear a mask though. Like wearing a globe on your head. So all right. So I thought that too, uh, when I was thinking about ki- getting your kid to wear a mask at the beginning of all this nonsense. Right. I see kids walking around all the time, aren't talking at their masks. They've already been conditioned to it. No, it's it's so true. They've already been conditioned to it. My so my, true. my niece and nephew, when when I went and visited uh, to announce uh, my engagement, I swung by home after getting engaged on the top of a mountain, guys. Mm-hmm. A mountain. That was great. And my niece uh, complimented my mask when I was home. She's like, hey, I like your mask. Here's mine. It's it's become a fashion. Yeah. As, and so, and so, and that's what should have happened right, at, right away when this all hit was like everybody wear a mask and let's figure this out all together and um so but because we're at where we are now we can see so this is the first time that one singular virus has gotten the chance i think to taste test the entire human species on the entire planet in less than a year right and just as and i thought and i had this thought before the variants started popping up i'm not a prof i'm not a prophet guys but i know a little bit about how science works and uh, i literally was thinking about that when the variants started popping up Mm -hmm. and so i mean that's how viruses work they always morph and so this is the first time that we've been able to travel like we get a flu shot every year because the different variants you're really only getting inoculized against the variants that they think are going to be the most deadly that year exactly and so this is the first time 
So we've been dealing with the flu for a long time. Mm -hmm. And this is the first time that another virus of a similar strain has gotten the chance to taste test the entire human species on every single continent in less than a year. And we have to catch up and it's already starting to mutate. Yeah, and that's and, and, and viruses else, and microbes yeah. and fungi have been around on this planet a lot longer than we have, and they and they're very resilient. And so I think, John, where where this is going, is that in first world countries specifically, people are going to be a lot more vigilant about their personal health. Um, the suit that I was wearing outside, uh, walking around in Prospect Park, you had a helmet, and now I'm totally safe no matter what I do. So if you shrink that down to the size of my head, and and it's somehow in some sort of nanomaterial that 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 is a uh, that allows me to, so the eye contact thing is important, you know, yeah. ironically, cause you're wearing the sunglasses <laughs> and be able to make eye contact with you all, all night. But with this, that's one of the reasons that this is so important is something like this, because after all this time where people are stuck indoors, there's a hunger for socialization. Mm -hmm. Like, right. like I'm excited to talk to you guys because I don't get to do this very yeah, often, right. I seen you, in forever. you know, and, uh, and, and now all the planning that has to go into it. Like we had to go take our rapid tests this morning right. and, and make sure that then we're, we're vigilant about every, all of our actions after that. Right. Yeah. Uh, that's going to, for mindful people and for the people you that really are going to move the planet continue? into the future, for yeah. the people that move this planet into the future. Yes. I think that there's going to be an, a, a, an increased vigilance of personal health when it comes to uh, our apparel. And this has to do with technology, very much so. What I'm wearing right now, these stretchy, these stretchy windproof pants are in, are, are waterproof, You're windproof. You're like the ultimate tech like, bro lately. You yeah. just got all the latest gear. I mean, yeah. he reviews it. So yeah, of course he would. Yeah. And if I don't review it, I'll buy it because I love this stuff. I love gear. I, I didn't realize I, I this, until this last year how much I love gear. I love I it. I love getting Lord. new gear and trying it out. Well, it's so and great. Like unwrapping that, it and like, oh, what's this button do? Oh, not what I expected. Why don't you oh. start a YouTube review channel? <laughs> And people have been telling me that. You it's, should it's just, just be opening, unboxing and reviewing shit, man. I'd, yeah. I'd watch it's that. A, I'd subscribe. It is, it is. Unboxing is a Do huge it, it, was, it was starting to become a, yeah, I'm not doing that. Six pack TJ. I'm done. I'm done. Put it to work. I'm done using my nudity for profit these oh days. Oh my, wait, no, don't you ever say that. Time is never over. Why? Do you we, got a, we you have got a hundreds. We have hundreds of years in front of us <laughs> where we can stay young and sexy. And, and his and, body and there his are, choice. Uh, yes, all I'm saying is keep your options open. Don't 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 act like our younger days are behind us. All I'm saying is saying. that's not what I'm saying at all. I'm ready to use my body for other things. Fair I, enough. So I've been so I this decade, maybe next decade. So, so I mean, one of the things, John, that I that I'm like I'm incredibly grateful for is that like back in the day, I started weight training when I was 15 years old, and I used to bench press 305 pounds for no reason at all in college because I thought I wanted to be a frat boy meathead. Mm -hmm. right. And then I st and then I stopped doing all that ridiculous weight training. I was able to curl 80 pounds per arm. For some godforsaken reason, I was able to shrug five fifty, wow. um, and so I stopped doing that before I hurt myself. And I have all that current look. That's all these stretch marks. Yeah, from here to here. That's from being able to bench press a ridiculous amount of weight at a very small amount of time. All I see is biceps. All I see is guns. I don't yeah. see no stretch marks. So now I've got lean muscle and a lot of muscle memory that goes along along with it that I'm yeah. very grateful for. So I can train for different things like hiking and. And, um, and I've been trail running a lot and biking over you the last year. You are a well-rounded gentleman with a lot of assets and ah. you have learned how to put them to use. And it's been so cool to see how that diversity in your skill set, that diversity in your approach to the world has enabled you to take on these new challenges of this year, of this pandemic and thrive in the middle of a time when everybody else is just like putting mm -hmm. their feet up and saying, I give up. I don't know how to do this. I'm going to wait for the <laughs> world to come back. Well, guess what? The world ain't coming back. It's, it ain't coming back the way you want it to come back. It is a new, a new world. It's a phoenix. We are you growing or get a new behind. world and we have to figure how we fit into that new world. TJ Fink, you have been such an inspiration to watch you metamorphosize. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Metamorphosization. <laughs> your phoenix, <laughs> your lovely fiance's phoenix, the two of you together, you guys you guys are just an inspiration for us. We have been well, thank you. really enjoying uh, following your progress on social media. Thank uh, you. Thank you for coming in and, and sharing your story with us. Thank we, you so much for having delightful. me. We look I'm forward. So, we're always happy to hang out. Yeah, I'm always I, happy to be here. I, I want to see where this goes <laughs> in 10 years, 15 yeah. years, 20. I want to be doing this podcast in 100 years on series station. Series is is an asteroid, uh, in case anybody wants to know. Yeah, on well, on series in a hundred years in what is that twenty one twenty? 
Okay, first of all, I mean, you can go to series. Have fun on series. <laughs> You're Mark. coming with me, girl. Bitch, I'm going to Europa. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, we here, can do it on Europa. Well, Europa's this? cool, too. Well, how about this, guys? I'll throw, I'll, Down. I'll throw a... I am an ocean girl through and through. <laughs> I'll throw a slightly more realistic fantasy of mine at you, guys. As a tech journalist right now, and me, with uh, me keeping track of where things are going, there is a possibility that within my lifetime, if I played my cards right, I could be writing a story that covers the first space elevator. That's dope. That goes to the yes. ISS. Like that yes. stuff, that stuff's in, that is happening like, in our lifetime. Like Do you that, think? Oh yeah. yeah. That's, that stuff space is being, con it's being conceptualized wow. right now. Oh, yeah, yeah. space elevators. And so, so imagine a space elevator, the ISS uh, or, Babel. or to other. God. Yeah. So it's just like that sort of thing. Like it, it, it floors me. I mean, I'd love to do floors that. Me. I'd love to do a, a space elevator floors you. I, I'd love to. Ah, <laughs> that's how you know you're good when your puns do accidentally. <laughs> but uh, I mean, oh I'd, love to do, I'd love to do the one way trip to Mars, but that's just, you know. Ter no, Tara fuck would, one way trips. Tara Tara would, there is no one way trip in this lifetime. Yeah. I've mean, already, talked, I've already talked to Tara about this. She would complain so hard if I just took off to Mars. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. You'd uh, never hear the end of it. I'd never TJ. hear the end of it. Well, until the transmission stopped. <laughs> I, I, I guess. <laughs> I guess. Sorry, or honey. until I hit the airlock button like an idiot. <laughs> and, then, and then that would be the last you ever heard. And, oh, yeah, TJ, he went to Mars for that opportunity. You know? Yeah, he hit the wrong button like an <laughs> idiot. You know, in Minnesota, <laughs> my dad grew up in Minnesota. All you got to do is go out to go ice fishing to get away from the wife. In our day and age, we're going to have to go to Mars. That'll be a whole new, a whole new experience to get that six minute delay. Expensive. But, TJ, thank you for coming in, for sharing your experience. Thank you for having me, Let's guys. do this again. Let's talk about the future. I'm so excited about where this Absolutely. whole experience and what we've been learning in this this crazy year. Yeah. What it has taught us. Where is it going to take us? I want to see where you're going next. Mystery deepens. The journey continues, guys. Where, where can people find you? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's see here. Uh, my social networks. Um, my writer's uh, Instagram would be Teej Machine. And uh, my mixology Instagram is The Artisanal Alchemist. And uh, there's websites websites for both of those things. TJFink.com. TheArtisanalAlchemist.com. I've got a link tree stuff yeah if you find me give me a shout you on twitter i am on the twitter also teach machine awesome yeah okay. so people want if, if people want to hit you up people have questions because i mean i think some of our audience they're, they're they're asking themselves how can we how can we learn to be more diverse in our skill set so that we can take on the world in the same way that TJ is taking on the world and thriving in a moment when everything is changing and we need to be able to like have our Swiss army knives at our belt, right? People are going to have I questions like that. What I'm asking is people can reach you on Twitter. People can reach you on Facebook. People can reach you on Instagram. Get ready for, for people to reach out. All right. I got one last thing for you, brother, because in one, in one sentence, I can tell you how I've done these things because I, I try to hang on to a mindset of always learning, always adapting, always evolving. That's it. I feel like that needs an acronym. Um, learn L A E Leah. Uh, we'll, Always we'll work Leah. on that one for next time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Have a great one. This has been amazing. Thank you Thanks guys for having me, with guys. Us. Thank you, TJ. Thank and you. we will see you guys back here in, in the, the next, next one. one. It's been a fun time. Thanks for checking out this clip from our show. To watch more clips or full episodes, click on our profile below. If you want to stay up to date on all of our new episodes and videos, click subscribe. And if you have any ideas for future guests or topics that you would like to see us cover on the show, leave us a message in the comments or connect with us on any of our social media channels at Funtime Program or on our website at FuntimeProgram.com. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.